presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Minnesota. Tomorrow, the Twins are busy here at Hammond Stadium getting ready for the 2012 season. Familiar names and faces are hard at work, hoping to have a much better season in 2012. And we welcome you to Fort Myers, Florida. Dick Bramer along with Burt Blylev. And the best way to forget about a bad season is to start the next one. And that's what the Twins are getting done here. Yeah, this will be game four for the Minnesota Twins here in spring training in Fort Myers, Florida. One guy that has really worked hard all winter long to get ready for spring training is Joe Maurer. Also, Justin Morneau. Both of them playing very well so far. They've been consistent, and that's what the Twins need. These guys, Dick, need to be on, on the field for spring training. And we're going to see them both in the lineup tonight. A lot of familiar names are gone from the Twins this year, but some new faces and names come to the roster, including tonight's starting pitcher, Jason Marquis. Yeah, Marquis comes in with some pretty nice credentials. He's won over 100 ball games at the major league level, signing a, as a free agent. This guy, when he is on, he'll get a lot of ground ball outs. Well, the Twins would like to forget most of what happened in 2012. So with their opponent tonight, the Boston Red Sox, they got a few skeletons in their closet after what happened last year. Well, have a great fruit league game here in Fort Myers, Florida in just a moment. Minnesota Twins Baseball on Fox Sports North is brought to you by your local Northland Ford dealers. Visit your local Northland Ford dealer or go to NorthlandFord.com. And by Menards. Save big money on all your home improvement needs at Menards. 
Twins have won two of the first three games so far at Grapefruit League play. They'll take on the Boston Red Sox here tonight. Nice to be back. It, it is good to be back. You yes. know, the players talk about it. I think the fans are excited to get the season started. I know you and I are, so mm -hmm. we're happy to be bringing you our first spring training telecast tonight. And here's the Red Sox Menards batting order. Jose Iglesias leading off. Ryan Sweeney hitting second. Kevin Euclid is third. Yeah, first baseman. David Ortiz hitting cleanup. Darnell McDonald, Josh Kroger, Kelly Shopik, Nick Punto, and Jason Remco. A lot of familiar names in that Red Sox lineup. Oh, there's Jason uh, Marquis. Marquis, uh, 33 years old, signed as a free agent by the Braves, a former number one pick by the Atlanta Braves way back in 1996. This guy talked to Rick Anderson, a pitching coach, prior to Marquis starting to warm up. He said, a lot of fastballs and change-ups here tonight. Not too many breaking balls, just wants to work on control and then work on the change-up. Something you see a lot of spring training, especially early on, Dick. A veteran player, veteran pitcher like uh, Marquis will be working on his things through through a spring training working on his pitches and yeah so far all the starters have pitched well it'll be Scott Baker tomorrow and then Nick Blackburn but uh, Liriano pitched two very good innings Carl Pavano two very good innings Marquis right now scheduled to start game three in Baltimore if it stays in this rotation and the twins have gone this route before with veteran pitchers a few years ago Levon Hernandez had bounced around quite a bit and he actually pitched pretty well for the mm -hmm. twins up until the all star break. Yeah Marquis a former all star he's like I mentioned before over 100 games at the major league level he's won so he knows how to win. Jose Iglesias. Playing shortstop for the Red Sox and he takes strike one Tim Cheetah local boy Twin Cities native behind the plate for the game here tonight. Iglesias, Sweeney, and Euclid to get things started for Boston. And missing inside. One and one. Well, the Twins are the seventh different Major League team and uniform that Marquis has has had on. The Braves, the Cardinals, the Cubs, the Rockies, Nationals, Diamondbacks. First time in the American League for Jason Marquis. Saw some uh, former twins in the uh, Boston lineup. They got a former twin on the first base coach's mm -hmm. box. Alex Ochoa is their new first base coach. Yeah, Ochoa was uh, with the twins back in 1998. Some good years in the major league. Good to see him back up here as a coach. One and two to Iglesias. Swing and a miss. And Marquis might not get to lead the league in strikeouts, but he gets a strikeout here tonight. Northland Ford. Good location, Dick. Northland Ford defense for the twins. And some of these names will uh, be in position uh, for the Twins uh, in the uh, opener in Baltimore. Dolman, Span, and Willingham across the outfield. The Holloman at third. Dozier and Michioka up the middle. Warno at first. And we've got a Joe Maurer behind the plate. Dolman new to the Twins, and he might see some time in left field, and he might see some time behind the plate. He won't see time in both positions in the same game. <laughs> He's <laughs> quick, but not that quick. <laughs> Here's Ryan Sweeney. Sweeney has kind of bounced around a little bit, too. We saw him with the White Sox the last several years with the uh, Oakland A's, and now his first year with the Red Sox. I'll tell you, we were talking earlier. When I saw Ryan Sweeney come up with the Chicago White Sox back in 2006, I thought they had a keeper, someone that's going to be in the big leagues for the White Sox for a long time, but it never really has panned out for him. He coming into the season, not a bad hitter, a 283 hitter, but no power. And this guy is 6'4", about 225. Last two years with Oakland, he had 567 at bats and hit two home runs. Cedar Rapids, Iowa, native, three and one now from Marquis to Sweeney. Yeah, I think Dick, you know, going into spring training, that's the biggest question here. Not only we talked a little bit about the open, about the health of these players, but who's going to be the shortstop, who's going to be the second baseman, the strength, what Ron Gardenhire wants to really establish here, wants guys to step up, and who's going to be my shortstop, who's going to be my second baseman. So important. And a ball like that, as routine as it was, you just want the confidence on the field and in the dugout that a ground ball when it leaves home plate is going to be turned into just an make the routine right. play and we didn't see that last year on a consistent basis. Here's Kevin Euclid Dozier might get a chance to 
play it short this year for the Twins. Jamie Carroll's played the first couple days here. He won't be playing tonight. You saw Nishioka over at second base where he started the year last year. One strike to Euclid. And now a ball. A lot of new faces for the Red Sox, too. Uh, we said earlier, uh, half joking, they've got some skeletons in their closet. More accurately, they swept the closet out. New manager, mm -hmm. new coaches, new general manager. A lot of new players for the Red Sox, too. Well, one guy that can flat out hit is this guy right here, Kevin Euclid. He had an offseason last year, but came in, you know, last year hit only 258. And this is a guy that usually hits 280 to 300 mark. He'll drive in, you know, 100 runs. And there's the new manager. If you can call him a new manager, Bobby Valentine, new for the Red Sox anyway. And just off the corner. Yeah, look at the uh, career record over, uh, you know, a thousand wins in his career. He managed for the Rangers, the Mets. In Japan, where he was mm -hmm. a manager of uh, Tsuyoshi Nishioka for a number of years. Fouled away, three and two. And we referenced it, but uh, baseball fans know, maybe some of our viewers don't. The Red Sox had a colossal, historic collapse at the end of the year last year, and Terry Francona, in essence, switching jobs with Bobby Valentine. Bobby Valentine was a national baseball analyst, and now Francona's doing that, and Valentine's doing Francona's old job. There's ball four to Euclid. So a two out walk, and Marquis just missing. With ball four. Yeah, one thing he tries to do is get on top of that baseball. He does a good job right there. Good angle toward home plate. Just missing lows. That's what Tim Cheetah, the home plate umpire, called it. It was low in the strike zone. Bobby Valentine has said he wants to get David Ortiz out into some games at first base this year. The Red Sox have a great one in Adrian Gonzalez, but uh, when interleague play comes around, uh, the Red Sox would like to be able to have the option at least of running Ortiz out there to play a game at first base to get his bat in the lineup fouled away. Once you know Dick I think it would be good. I, I like his thinking right there. Get him you know let him play some first base in spring training. But as the season goes you know Gonzalez is going to play even though he's a guy that does play almost every ball game. Good to give him maybe the DH role or they say in Gon Gonzalez can also play some right field. They have him out in right field a little bit. Lad Ortiz, you know, being a DH every day has got to, you know, kind of wear on you sometimes. Let him go out and play a little bit. I mean, he's probably happy he's playing first base here tonight. I'm sure he's getting a little abuse from the Twins dugout or will when he takes over. There's a ball to the backstop. Lauer tried to backhand it and didn't do it. Might be a. Uh, Pass ball on the Bauer here. Well, a lot of times when the catcher's sitting away, and then you can see where that ball looked like a little cutter right there, like a slider down and in. Ball got away from Joe. And, and Euclid's, Euclid's goes to uh, second base. And a lot of times, you know, it's it's Joe has maybe he's caught him on the side, but not in a ball game to where, you know, how's that breaking ball break? And that, that's pretty hard breaking ball right there. So it's getting to, to know your pitchers. One and two now to Ortiz. And one thing Joe does, all the catchers do, no matter who they are, they take a lot of pride in handling a pitching staff. Well, if you remember back to where we were a year ago with Maurer, he was doing some bullpen sessions, but he was he spent as much time, I don't want to say inactive, but not part of the regular catching uh, routine that one would go through. Certainly that's changed this year. Popped up, foul, and out of play. Well, what you have to learn is what does Marquis like to throw when he's ahead in the count? One ball, two strikes. Does he want to work on that fastball inside to Ortiz by his hands, or does he want to go with that sinker down and away? And you know, only time will will help these two guys go about their business. You can almost see Joe kind of point out at Marquis, saying, "Okay, good pitch right there." As a veteran pitcher, you want to throw. Marquis is going to. Basically, throw what he wants. Joe can only suggest. There's a call. There it is. Good pitch. A two out walk. Does no damage. Euclid left at second and a good first inning for Jason Marquis.
Gardenhire and Joe Maurer talking about Jason Marquis' first inning in a, a Twins uniform. Gardy and the coaches have uh, tried to buckle down here a little bit. Uh, they've had a little extra time to work on some fundamentals. The Menard batting order tonight. Menard's fans, Sayoshi Nishioka, Joe Maurer, Justin Morneau, Josh Willingham, Ryan Domit, Luke Hughes in the lineup, Brian Dozier, and Michael Holloman. And on the mound for the Boston Red Sox, it'll be Clay Buckholz. Buckholz had a frustrating year last year. He's six and three, but right around June, that back acted up for him, and he ended up missing the rest of the season. A guy that the White and Red Sox are really counting on this year. One thing that Dick that they need, they need good starting pitching. They have Lester, they have Beckett, but that 3-4-5 spot, they're hoping that Clay Buckholz can get to where he was a couple of years ago when he was an all-star and a 17-game winner. Red Sox out on the field have Kruger, Repko, and Sweeney in the outfield. Nick Bunto at second base, another former twin, David Ortiz at first, Glacius and Lucas on the left side of the infield, and veteran Kelly Shopping behind the plate. So much made, and we've contributed to that, talking about Maurer and Morno, and yet this guy in the box right now, a key for the Twins if they hope to regain uh, some prominence in the division, and that's Denard's fan. I had a chance to go on a winter caravan with Denard, and boy, he's pumped up. He he came into spring training in tremendous shape, makes his home just north of here in, in Tampa, and uh, he's, he's really looking forward to put all that concussion stuff behind him and, and go about his business. He's a guy that needs to get on, score a lot of runs for the Twins this season. One strike to Span before his concussion issues surfaced after his collision with Brian Pena in Kansas City. He might have been on his way to an all-star appearance. And you tend to forget, but you look around in the American League Central and you could make a case, I think, that Denard Span is the best leadoff hitter in the division when he's able to play. That's the key right there. Again, the key going into the season. Keep these guys healthy, but get them at bats here in spring training. Remember last year, Dick, how many regulars did not get at bats because of little nagging injuries from Delman Young to Kadire to Maurer, Morneau? But you need these guys at bat. I had a chance to talk to Tony Oliva before the ball game about the importance of these guys playing in spring training. And he said it's very important. He said, when I played, if there was 30 spring training games, I wanted to play in 20 to 25 games. I wanted to be ready for opening day. And there's no comparison for a player in, in getting at bats in games or opposed on the backfield no. in a a B game or anything like that. Yeah, Tony said, you know, he used to come out and, and take as many, you know, swings as he could off a tee or something like that. He said, but you need to face live pitching. You need to see the hard fastball. You need to see the breaking ball when you know what's not coming. And in Denard's case, you need to work at bats, and we've seen him do that here. It's two and two when he is on his game, and really the, the strength of his game is seeing a lot of pitches and going deep into the count. And he takes ball three. And that's a good leadoff hitter. It just shows everybody else what Buckholz has had to throw so far. Five pitches into the set bat. Buckholz still a youngster, 27 years old, in his sixth season with the Boston Red Sox. And he takes ball four, so he fell behind. And uh, as patient as he always is, he works out a walk. Now, we saw this the other day. I didn't see either game yesterday, but David Price pitched here on uh, Saturday. And all the way through the batting order, the Twins were very patient with the Tampa Bay pitchers. First, it was Price. They were so patient, in fact, Price only pitched one inning rather than two. I tell you what, Dick, it burns a pitcher, too. If I'm out there and I get ahead of that first hitter, 0 oh and 2, no balls, two strikes, and then I walk him. Boy, I'm upset. I don't care if it's my first string training outing or not. I have to throw strikes. And here is Suyoshi Nishioka. He had a extremely disappointing 2011, his first in uh, the United States, first for the Twins, obviously. And he finds himself in a much different situation here this year where he, in essence, is fighting for a job. Well, you know what? You have to kind of back off and say okay here's a guy that came from Japan signed a three year contract with the twins two weeks into the season breaks his leg. And you see the good move right there by Clay Buckles he has a very good move to first base in one area that I know Jerry White's not there at first right now Scotty Alger but 
They're going to time Buckholz toward home plate. And then Span, one thing he wants to improve this year is not getting picked off at first base. Scotty Alger in for Jerry White, who's been uh, taken to a hospital today for some observation and tests. Wish him our very best. Up and away to Nishioka. A year ago, the question regarding Nishioka was where he would play, shortstop or second. And I guess, in a sense, the question is the same, but where will he play? In Minnesota or in Rochester? I mean, it's that extreme a difference between uh, his status a year ago and where he is this year. So these at bats very important for Nishioka. You know, you come to a new country, you get settled down. He had a frustrating year last year. He went home, thought about it. He's he's ready to compete for a starting job. One and zero to Nishioka. Span leads off. It's two and zero, oh, and Shopik has seen enough. That's six in a row outside the strike zone for Buckles. You mentioned the Red Sox starting pitching, and they uh, have had. Uh, a lot of depth in that regard going back to Dice K Matsuzaka and some others that have come through there. But uh, they are blessed to have three top shelf starters in Beckett Lester and this guy if he can stay healthy figures to be right in there with him. Oh, they're hoping that John Lackey would be that right. fourth starter but he's out for the year with the Tommy John surgery. Two and out in Ishioka. And now three and out. Ishioka finished the season at short after having his leg broken at second base. Maurer on deck. And three and one. Ishioka looking down at Steve Little, a third base coach. Maybe a Getting maybe Stan running right here. Buckholz fighting with his control. Will probably throw a fastball right here. This is what you try to do in spring training. Try to get the players moving. Try a couple things. This is a time to do it. Twins have worked very hard with Nishioka on his swing, particularly from the left side of the plate. What they've tried to do with Nishioka, in essence, is keep his head still. Particularly again from the left side of the plate, he tended to have an awful lot of upper body movement over the course of his swing. Span goes, and Nishioka pops it up to the right side. And Span's got to hustle back. Ortiz with the catch, one down. Well, it looked like they put a little hit and run on right there. That's the time to try it. Try to see what he could do, but except, except Nishioka got a pitch, but he popped it straight up. Gotta hit that ball into the ground right there because with a with span taken off, you've got either the shortstop, second baseman covering a the bag. There's a little hole right there, and Nishioka popped it up. So now Maurer, who had a disappointing year with uh, the number of uh, games played and uh, a sub 300 batting average. And he says it's night and day the difference between uh, what he experienced a year ago and how he feels this year. I don't care how long you play. Sometimes you go through a season like Joe did. You're on a mission. And Joe, I think we showed you his hard workout routine during the winter. This guy is on a mission along with the guy that's on the on deck circle. He's they're so happy to to be out there and play in the game of baseball and not have to worry about you know little nagging injuries right now. One strike to Maurer. And a lob to first, span back again. Maurer caught five innings here on Saturday. Didn't play in either game yesterday. Twins had a split squad date yesterday, winning one, losing one. Up and in just a little bit, one and one. Bunk holds a little wobbly with his control here early on. 
Yeah, a lot of pitches up in the strike zone, just trying to overthrow right now. Buckholz, outstanding stuff. He has four quality pitches, but everything keys off the fastball. Got to get the fastball down in the zone. Check swing. We think they'll appeal. No, it's a check swing, two and one. Well, Looks like he took something off right here. And Joe able to keep those hands back and the barrel of the bat back. Side. Punto starts a 4 6 3 double play. Buckle survives some wobbly control and pitches a scoreless first. Those two guys hope that uh, the 2012 bullpen will be better than the one in 2011, but a rough start in that regard. They took a chance on Joel Zamaya, and uh, it didn't work out. Well, Joel Zamaya, you know, he's got that fastball that can go at, uh, you know, 100 miles an hour in our Stanford health injury report. But sorry for uh, Joel Zamaya. I mean, he came in the camps great, you know, great shape, looking forward to getting that arm healthy again, and uh, blew out his elbow. He needs a Tommy John surgery. Debated for a while whether to even go through it. He spent so much of his career rehabbing uh, one arm injury after another, and uh, he decided to go ahead and go with that and to get the procedure done. Here's Darnell McDonald. I'm glad he is. He's only 27 years old, so this guy, you know, I mean, you come back, it takes a long time to come back from the Tommy John, but hey, if it's still in your heart to compete, go ahead and try it. Just got to wear on you, though, doesn't it? I mean, you spend so much time with one serious injury after another. Remember, he broke his elbow against the Twins. At target field a couple of years ago. There's a chopper, and that's past a reaching Holloman at third base. And McDonald will glide to second. Now the ball gets by the left fielder, and McDonald will go to third. Domit couldn't pin the ball into the corner, and McDonald will stand at third with a leadoff double and a error on the play by Domit. Anytime an outfielder has to go down into that corner, you want to get your body in front of it and make sure it stays in front of you. See right there, he just didn't get that glove down and got through the wicket, and that allows McDonald to go from second to third. Josh Kroger will hit with McDonald at third. Twins, of course, playing the infield back here in the second inning. So for Marquis, and you talked about when he's on, he'll get a lot of ground balls. He's uh, had four balls put in play, or excuse me, he's uh, had the four at bats, two strikeouts, and the two balls put in play have been hit on the ground. Yeah, you know what? As a pitcher right here, all you're thinking is continue to throw strikes. 
the runner at third, 90% of the chance he's going to score right here. So just make good quality pitches. Don't let this inning get away from you. Sharply up the middle for an RBI single, and Kroger makes it one nothing Boston. Well, it looked like they tried to go in on Kroger. It didn't go in far enough. See, a ball came back right there over the heart of the plate. Ball down, but Kroger, good piece of hitting right back up the middle, picks up the RBI. We mentioned the Red Sox had their collapse at the end of the season last year, a collapse that allowed the Rays to get into the playoffs, and Kelly Shopik was one of their catchers last year. Didn't hit much, 176 on the season. Had a good, uh, pretty good uh, postseason for the Rays and their loss to the Rangers. And another one that gets by Mauer to the backstop. That one will be a wild pitch. A second wild pitch in, uh, for Marquis. Shopik squaring around, showing bunt. And that sinker short hops Joe Mauer back into the backstop. Well, Jason Veritek retired. He was the captain of the Boston Red Sox. And, they, you know, Veritek, even though he had a pretty good year last year after, what, 16 seasons as a Boston Red Sox, came here to Fort Myers to announce his retirement. Right after Tim Wakefield did. And mm -hmm. Wakefield, another mainstay in the yep. uh, Red Sox roster. One and one to Shopik. It's kind of a homecoming for Shopik. He originally signed with the Boston Red Sox back in 2001. Off speed pitch missing. And it's two and one. Played for the Red Sox in 2005 before going over to Cleveland where he spent four seasons and then the Rays for a couple years. Two and one to Shopping. And that's over the glove of Dozier in the left field. The runner will be held at third, and the inning starts with three hits against Jason Marquis. And that'll bring up Nick Punto. Let's take a look at the pitch. Fastball right there. Shopping hitting it sharply. Dozier goes over. Tries to short hop it right there, but the ball bouncing over his glove in the left field. So Nick Punto signing a deal with the Red Sox after winning a world championship, helping the Cardinals win that world championship last year. He had some injuries last year. He played the 63 ball games, hit 278. Guy that brings a lot of energy with him to the ballpark. Seven seasons Nick Punto wore a twins uniform. All those years in postseason play wanting to win a World Series and he was limited to 133 at bats for the Cardinals during the regular season. But uh, played in six of the seven games for the Cardinals in the World Series and eventually he will get his ring. Well, Boston ended up trading Marco Scudero away their shortstop last year. So there's talk that Nick Punto has that opportunity to be their everyday shortstop here in Boston. Well, the Red Sox are hoping he doesn't play much at second base as he is tonight because that means something really bad happened to Dustin Pedroia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Two and zero. Oh. Punto played for the Twins in the playoffs in 2006 and 2009. Another off speed pitch missing. It's 3 0. Well, spring training is about strengthening your arm. 20 pitches in the first inning, 12 so. In the bullpen, the max for Marquis was going to be two innings, and he's having a tough time in this second inning. There's ball four, and they're loaded up. Weekdays on Fox Sports North. It's the Dan Patrick Show. Exclusive guests, including high profile athletes and celebrities, breaking sports news, unparalleled insider access, pop culture commentary. The Dan Patrick Show, weekdays at 8 a.m. on Fox Sports North. It's Jeff Manship warming up for the Twins. 
So one run in, base is full, nobody out, and here's Jason Repko. Repko, a utility outfielder for the Twins, and he'll have an uphill battle trying to win that spot for the Red Sox. Marquis starts up high. Mentioned just a couple innings expected of all the twin starters first time through. And I'm guessing that changed a lot. When you first came up with the twins in 1970 and then in the early 70s, your first outing of the spring would usually last how long? About three innings. Really? Okay. Yeah, you try right. to go three the first time out. And Marquis really struggling here. 2 0. That time Maurer with the bases full is able to backhand that ball and knock it down. Yeah, good job right here by Joe right there. Kind of backhanding that ball. Repco. And they'll get one, but not two. Fourth play at second base. Repco gets credit for a run batted in with Kroger scoring. And it's two to nothing. Now the ball not hit hard enough right there to maybe turn to double play. Repco getting down that line quickly. But he does pick up the RBI and the Red Sox take a two nothing lead. Runners at first and third with one out. This is where you need to ground ball hit a little bit harder. Maybe turn a double play. Iglesias struck out. Leading off the first inning. Beautiful night for baseball here. They're saying game time temperature 70 degrees. It's supposed to get what into the 50s, I think, back home tomorrow. Sinker low, ball one. Sure, you didn't, didn't have much snow at all, no, did you? We didn't. You know what? I I uh, I got uh, uh, almost through the winter without using my snowblower. I got till February 29th, the day wow. before I came down here, and I never even had to fire up the snowblower. Unbelievable. One and oh to Iglesias. Runner goes. Maurer throws through. That's a stolen base for Jason Repko. Well, tough play for Joe Maurer. Good strong throw, but he had to short hop this pitch from Marquis, but still made a good throw. You pick up the runner at third. Joe still strong arm at second, but Repco steals it. Two and zero oh now to Iglesias. Corner infielders playing even with their bases here. Middle infielders back. Swing and a miss. A mighty swing and a miss by Iglesias. Rick Anderson hoping that Marquis can buckle down here, but you know, all uh, would be surprised to see a pitching change made if Marquis can't get Iglesias or the next batter. And again, missing low, three and one. With Ryan Sweeney on deck. You can see right there too many balls to strikes. Total of 40. A sinking fastball gets a swing and a miss. Three and two. Sweeney on deck. Well, you almost have to go back in again with that sinker. He struck him out in his first at bat with that good sinker inside. A couple swings and misses so far on that pitch inside to Iglesias. Iglesias only 22 years old, defecting from Cuba, signed by the Boston Red Sox in 2009. Key with a long look into Maurer, and now Maurer will go to the mound, and they'll figure it out out on the pitcher's mound. Our first uh, quick trip to the mound by Joe Maurer. 
The only thing about this half inning that's been quick. <laughs> Just one out in the inning. And a couple of runs have already scored for Boston. Well, now we're sitting outer half of the plate. Breaking ball, tap foul. He tried to slide her. Struck out on four pitches in the first inning at bat, and now in his second inning at bat. He's seen six and will get a seventh. Ooh. And that one gets by Mauer. The third one to the backstop. A run will score on a walk, and it's three to nothing. Another wild pitch, and it's been a rough inning here for Jason Marquis. Yeah, three wild pitches so far in this ball game for Marquis. Trying to keep that ball down, but that ball getting away from Joe. Tried to backhand that rather than maybe trying to get his body in front of it. All the way back to the backstop. Anderson and Bauer both going to the mound. And Manship has had plenty of time to warm up. Twins open the regular season in Baltimore and then come home for the opening homestand after a three game series against the Orioles. And this year, Fox Sports North is going to televise 150 games. I'm hoping to be there for all of them, and you're you're you're. Uh, I'm doing two thirds of them. Two thirds of them. Yeah, That'd be right California around 100. Map. Right around 100. Very good. Very good. <laughs> Ron Coomer, Roy Smalley, and Tom Kelly will be uh, filling in for Burt when he uh, gets his well-deserved time off. And Sweeney takes a strike on the outside corner. Good change up right there. And we've seen Marquis do that. He's missed with that change up a few times in some key spots. But again, that's the point of all this is to get out there and develop command in those pitches. Yeah, I, I liked working on certain pitches, but I wanted to get the guy <laughs> out. I didn't want to throw 50 pitches in two innings. Just outside one and one. Well, Marquis he really hasn't been on the mound since August, middle of August of last year. He was pitching a game for the Arizona Diamondbacks when he got hit by a line drive back up the middle and broke his leg. Started the season with the Washington Nationals, then got traded over to Arizona. Made only three starts for the Diamondbacks. Runner goes and the pitch hack foul. So Ramsey Karatli coming into the booth. Our traveling secretary probably wanting to know our our plans this year. I don't have any yet. You do. You're going back and forth. You're going to be flying all over the country, aren't you? Taking time and off. Ramsey, and Ramsey takes good care of all of us. Yes, he does. Make sure the buses are there. Make sure the plane lands on time. One and two to Ryan Sweeney. Called it. Oh, nice pickup by Morno. And the throw hits the runner in the back. A run will score, and the ball rolls into short left field. A wicked smash, and Morno got the out at first, but his throw hit Iglesias in the back near second base. Oh, what a great play right there by Justin. And you're holding the runner on, you jump off the bag, and this ball off the bat of Sweeney was hit sharply. But Justin on that short hop tags the bag for the second out. And then his throw ends up hitting the runner right in the buttocks and getting away into left field. So it could have ended the inning. It did not. And that means Manship will get a chance to clean up here in the second inning with Marquis checking out with some control issues, a couple of errors behind him. And so far, four runs on the board for the Boston Red Sox.
early in March. Everything is uh, not put under the microscope, but time for instruction between uh, the pitching coach and Jason Marquis. Well, you can see Rick Anderson right there talking about the angle about the pitch. He threw a lot of pitches below, I mean, just on the other side of home plate. So I'm sure Marquis in his Twins debut, not real happy here in spring training. Just make him work harder and uh, get on that uh, right frame of mind, a positive thought. Jeff Manship coming into the ball game, a guy that's been up and down with the Twins for years, and he's looking for one of these spots in that in the uh, bullpen, maybe as a long man. Manship made the team out of spring training last year, but just pitched in five games, and then he had some uh, shoulder problems and some back problems. One strike to Kevin Euclid, eighth man to bat here in the second inning. Lifted to right field. And Josh Willingham toward the line. Makes the catch, ends the inning. It was a long one. And a good one for Boston. Just three hits for the Red Sox with four runs. Four nothing Boston. Now, when you were a player, you paced yourself early in spring training. You're a broadcaster. No such thing. Man, no, we're, we're jumping right into a day game after a night game. <laughs> How about that, huh? <laughs> what were they thinking? I'm looking forward to going over to Port Charlotte tomorrow. Yeah, I am too. Yeah, I uh, I didn't have it written in my contract. I guess you didn't either. We'll, we'll both be there at noon tomorrow. Yeah, and then the Yankees come here uh, uh, Sunday. Next right. Sunday, yeah. Then we go to Lakeland later on. That's uh, uh, I'm going to Lakeland. I guess you got that written into your contract. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to Lakeland. Yeah, I'm not allowed in Lakeland. <laughs> it goes back to 1972, doesn't it? Here's Justin Morneau. It's been, uh, as he told me today, so far so good for Justin. He's uh, played. Well, he played six innings here on Saturday. He's gone through everything as uh, you would hope he would, and uh, has uh, felt fine so far. One and zero. Oh. Bounce foul. You know, little I know about concussions, I think, Dick, but what we've learned is that the focus, talking to Dar Bernard Spann during the winter caravan about what a concussion does, but it's the focus. Look at that play that he made off the bat of Ryan Sweeney. That takes a lot of concentration right there, and what he's doing right here in the batter's box, trying to pick up that ball off of the, the hand of Clay Buckholz and then react to it quickly. That's the things that, that Justin was fighting. That word you used, react. I think baseball, uh, you know, certainly it's a game of strength. It's a game of speed, but it's a game of reaction. Whether you're pitching on the mound, you're catching, you're playing first base, or you've got a split second as to whether to decide to swing to the, on this pitch or not. And Morno lines it foul off the tarp. You know, I always thought that the, one of the hardest things of any sport is to hit a round ball with a round bat and hit it solid. And good swing right there by Justin going down, but lining it foul. 
Two and two to Morno leading off the second inning. Willingham and Dolmet will follow. Pitch sailing up and away, and Morno flips it foul. Morno limited to 264 at bats. He had an assortment of other physical issues last year. But uh, again, so far, so good. A little roller to second, and an easy play for Punto, one down. Yeah, Buckles took a little off right there, just on a little out front, but a good at bat for Justin. One gone, that'll bring up Josh Willingham. Willingham's first with the Twins, his first year with the Twins. It's been last year with the Oakland A's, hit for some power, drove in 98 runs for a team that didn't score a lot of runs. Yeah, career high, 29 home runs with the 98 RBIs. Asked him today what uh, exposure he had to Minnesota, Minnesotans. And he said he played uh, in the Northwoods League when he was in college, came up and played in Minnesota in Austin. The uh, mini, mini bats or whatever the team was, they, they're not around anymore, but he played in Austin, Minnesota for a number of years. Yeah, played his college ball out of the University of North Alabama, makes his home in Alabama. Fastball down the middle and it's one and two. Guy that has some power. 132 major league home runs. He came up with the Marlins, spent time with the Nationals, and then last season with the Oakland A's. Asked him what his impressions were of Target Field. He said it was beautiful and big. <laughs> and he'll try to beat the dimensions at Target Field about 30 times this year. He might have gotten hit by the pitch there, brushed. His jersey, so he'll reach first base and get Doma to the plate. Well, Kelly Shopik really sat inside, and Buckholz tried to get that ball in. Or we'll see where Shopik's sitting. Put the ball a little bit inside. Just got the maybe his jersey right there. And so another guy with some pop in his bat, switch hitter Ryan Domit, who might be a backup catcher for the Twins, but he can also, as we uh, have. Seen here today, be assigned to the outfield, coming out of the Pittsburgh organization. You know, one thing the Twins have had in the Maurer era is a backup catcher who was considered a defensive catcher, whether it was a Mike Redman, Drew Butera. Certainly, the Twins ended up. Losing a lot offensively when Joe was not behind the plate. If Domit sticks as a backup, maybe not the only backup, but a backup, the drop off offensively won't be as severe. Yeah, he's had some injuries over his career. He ended up breaking his ankle last year for the Pittsburgh Pirates, his left ankle. But uh, this guy can flat out hit a switch hitter, good power from both sides of the plate. Played in 77 ball games last year and hit the 303. One and one to Domit. Swing and a miss. You might be able just in looking at Domit's numbers at the end of the year. And where his at bats came from. If the bulk of his at bats come out of the DH spot, that probably means the Twins had a pretty successful season because that will necessarily mean that Maurer did the bulk of the catching, or so it would figure, and Morno was at first base for most of the season. Let's hope that happens. And that the outfield kind of stabilizes too with Span and Willingham and whomever out there, Plouffe, Revere, whoever it might be. Two and two.
we have had a lot of walks. Two of them issued by Buckholz, three of them by Marquis. We've had wild pitches. And we have had a snail's pace going on so far here tonight. And another three ball count. My goodness, with the exception. See, Morno's count, I believe, when he uh, hit the ground ball the second, it was two and two. But I think Buckholz off a couple pitches. Buckholz has had a three ball count with everybody he's faced. Luke Hughes on deck. And uh, Doma draws a walk. Well, Buckholz got away with his control issues in the first inning by getting uh, Nishioka to pop up on a 3 1 pitch and getting Maurer to bounce into a double play on a 3 1 pitch. Now a pair of one out walks gets Hughes to the plate with two men aboard. And it's good to see Hughes in the lineup at a time when you really want to be healthy at the very beginning of spring training. Hughes had a shoulder issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw him uh, before the ball game. He said he's fine. He's ready to get some good quality at bats. Make the ball club. Hughes is the designated hitter. He was injured his shoulder in Australia in a home plate collision. Strike one, and Hughes hoping to win a job as a utility player. One strike to Hughes. I heard a yawn in the booth. Did you hear that? Someone in the booth here has been yawning. It's our cameraman. Certainly was not us. No. One strike to Luke Hughes. Speed pitch gets a swing and a miss. We welcome you wherever you might be watching to Hammond Stadium in Fort Myers, Florida. Game four of Grapefruit League, uh, Grapefruit League action. For the Twins, along with Burt Blylove and Dick Bramer, with you. Two strikes to Hughes. And inside, one and two. Hughes with some pop in his bat. Will need to hit for a higher average. Twins figure to have Jamie Carroll at short on a regular basis and Alexi Casilla at second. Came inside, got a swinging miss. And they're two down now for Brian Dozier. When you join the Twin Season Ticket family this year, you'll be hitting the sweet spot. Purchase any of the Twin Season Ticket packages and you receive sweet spot benefits that are second to none in pro sports. Call 833 Twins. Visit twinsbaseball.com. Check out the options and learn about the cool benefits that come along with Twin season tickets. And Brian Dozier, who hopes to emerge out of this spring training as a promising middle infielder for years to come with the Twins. Now it is up for debate as to what his best position will be. Last year he played. Well at second he played well at short. He gets the start here tonight. At short. Yeah twins minor league player of the year last year. One strike. A high fastball and fouled it back. Two strikes. You can see his double A numbers. He saw teammates Joe Benson and Chris Parmalee make their debuts last year and 
some in the organization think that in 2012 Brian Dozier will make his major league debut. Two strikes to Dozier. Breaking ball swing and a miss and Buckholz carves him up and strands a couple of runners in the second. Sotans down here in Florida enjoying the concessions at Hammond Stadium. They got a thing here called the Richard Simmons like platter. There's Jeff Manship, and you see the numbers he put together last year. Really? Did you get it? No, no, but my son Eric did. Now here's, <laughs> did he? here's what it is. Here's Why? What it, uh, here's what it is. Okay. Richard Simmons, a fitness guru and all that, right? Okay. Have you seen him recently? I have not. Okay. All right. But the Richard Simmons thing, whatever it is, platter or whatever, it's a mm -hmm. cheeseburger with a bratwurst, Ooh. a grilled chicken fillet covered with bacon. <laughs> I guess that just gets him more clients yeah. in the future. I'm not a cardiologist, but I gotta believe. <laughs> My goodness, that's a, that's a uh, that's a healthy dose of cholesterol there. Swing and a miss by Ortiz, or foul tip, rather one strike. Now any of those things sounds in, pretty good. Any though. of those things individually sound really good. I think all three of them sounded pretty good with a Coors Light. Oh my goodness! There's just that's just fries <laughs> there. That's uh, nothing wrong with that. One strike to David Ortiz, who was called out on strikes to wrap up the first inning, and now Manship misses outside. Jobs are available in the Twins bullpen, and Manship would like to have a good spring and improve his candidacy to. Maybe win one of those jobs. That's hit a long way to right center field. Willingham back, and it's gone. Home run. So Ortiz cranks one out to make it five to nothing. Uh, Ortiz so strong that pitch left up right there, and 378 times at the major league level Ortiz has done that. So this year looking for. Career home run number 400, a career that started with the Twins back in 1997. Kept his hands back. It looked like it was even off the end of the bat, but big David Ortiz, so strong. Not necessarily. I hate uh, that sound. I was just going to say, I missed that sound. <laughs> Not off the of Boston Red Sox uh, bat, but uh, player's bat. But uh, I do miss that sound in the wintertime. Ortiz making it a five nothing ball game one and oh now to Darnell McDonald. But what is your winter been like what uh, you play golf and well, I play here? golf about three four days a week and uh, became a grandfather twice. Okay over uh, that's number seven and eight in the Bly Levin family. So uh, very happy to have two more new uh, grandsons. 
So it makes it uh, five to three now. Lifted to center harmlessly towards Span. Girl still out. Number my uh, my grandsons, but uh, my son Tim had. Uh, uh, you'll like this name, Dick. Uh, he came in at a world at 10 pounds, 5 ounces, and my son Tim named his son Bear. B-E-A-R, like a bear. Really? And uh, he's okay. got a good chance. My son is uh, six foot seven, so he's got a good <laughs> chance to be a bear. Their next child, they're going to name it Hawk. And uh, and then my uh, my stepson Royal uh, and his wife Jackie had a little uh, baby Royal. Came in at 7-11, uh, so... Two hopper to second. And how about yourself? Any grandchildren on your side? <laughs> no, <laughs> nothing like that at all. Just you know, some hunting and ice fishing and all that. As the boys prepare for the upcoming season, it's a good time to prepare for a group outing at Target Field. This year, you can organize your business, church, school, or maybe uh, two dozen of your close pals. Make a game of it. Call 833-TWINS. Visit TwinsBaseball.com. Check out the options and learn about the benefits that group organizers receive in 2012. Now, you said some ice fishing. Oh, yeah. But the weather has been kind yeah, of warm yeah, up there. You, yeah. can st you still went ice fishing. Well, I walk. I don't drive a vehicle oh, on the okay. ice, or at least I didn't this year. I walk out and uh, uh, did okay this year. 1 and 0. Oh. And you got your deer? Well, my son Eric shot his and mine this year, so yeah. <laughs> I'm being replaced. <laughs> yeah, I'm being replaced on a lot of fronts. Shopik the hitter taking a breaking pitch in the dirt one and oh. But very much looking forward to the start of the season and and I can't wait to get it going here. I don't know if we've mentioned yet but uh, you know there are 67 players that are wearing twins uniforms so it's a lot. That's a lot of players a lot a lot of coaching. Swing and a miss one and two. 33 pitchers. There'll be some cuts here in the next several days. Terry Ryan, the general manager, saying he wants to wait until the minor league camp uh, gets going up and running, and they're you know busy with activities over there to give the players who will be sent out a place to go to you know keep the blood flowing a little mm -hmm. bit. Minor league camp opens on Thursday. Good on the pitch. outside corner, Manship shaves the corner. Gives up a long home run to David Ortiz. It's five nothing Boston. Uh, one of many right here, you Minnesota Twin fans. You are here by Circle. And they'll be interested in the high school hockey tournament this weekend and on Fox Sports North Prep Zone, presented by Wells Fargo. You get a preview of the hockey tournament, and you'll get the story of a, this uh, iconic basketball coach walking away after decades of excellence in the Prep Zone's Hockey Player of the Year. Fox Sports North Prep Zone tomorrow at 6.30, only on Fox Sports North. Well, the Red Sox are hoping to uh, get lucky with Vicente Padilla as 
as he hopes to fill out a spot in the back end of the Boston oh, rotation. Carlos Silva also, uh, you know, an invitee as Padilla is for the Boston Red Sox. Padilla last uh, three years with the L.A. Dodgers. He's spent a lot of time at the major league level starting back in 1999. And he will face Michael Holloman leading off the third inning. Fastball down the middle, a strike. Holloman getting a chance to play at third base. Of course, Danny Valencia will be there most of the year. Nothing wrong with Valencia. He uh, out of the starting lineup, not playing tonight, but he worked uh, late this afternoon, almost. Uh, Almost till game time, taking the ground balls at uh, third base with Tom Kelly over on field five and working on uh, uh, his fundamentals at third base. Up and away, two and one. Yeah, Mike Holloman, he came over a couple years ago, signed with the Twins as a free agent. Has some major league time, and they have to go back to 2008 when he came up with the Tigers. He played in 11 ball games, hit a home run, drove in a couple runs. Foul back. The last thing the Twins want, of course, is to go through a year like last year where so many regular players were injured. But nevertheless, you need to develop depth behind the Valencias of the world. In case something were to happen, you need to have somebody who can step up and play the position. And that was uh, one of the shortcomings last year. Players went out less. So for Denard Span, Ben Revere did a representative job yes, he did. Uh, in the outfield in Span's absence. Two and two to Holloman starting the third inning. And he takes a call, third strike. That looked like a little cutter right there and kind of froze Holloman. And Padilla comes in and picks up a strikeout. Take a look at a pitch right here. Might have been a split finger. Just kind of hung there. So you've had veterans Buckholtz and now Padilla cut through the bottom third of the Twins batting order, getting three strikeouts of far less experienced players like Luke Hughes, Brian Dozier, and Michael Holloman. Back to the top of the order now and Denard Span. Big slow curveball just missing. 55 miles per hour. And it's ball one. Did you ever throw one that slow? Uh, no. I'd be afraid to. <laughs> There's a fastball that clips the corner. Uh, fastball at 93. Knee high on the outside corner. Now Padilla, 104 major league wins, 90 losses. He started 237 major league games. Foul back. The middle of the 2009 season, he was, shall we say, excused by the Texas Rangers. They owed him a lot of money. They decided to pay him off. And he was picked up by the Dodgers and actually pitched pretty well for them. Went 4 0. Seven starts. Has spent a lot of time on a disabled list last year. One and two to span. He fell behind 0 and 2 and worked out a first inning walk. And now two and two. Twins don't have a hit yet. They did take three walks against Clay Buck uh, Buckholz. Lifted to left. And Kroger makes the catch out number two. And that'll bring up Siyoshi Nishioka. So two gone in the third, Nishioka on a 3 1 pitch hit a pop up to David Ortiz his first time up. Inside ball one. Nishioka 
signing a three year deal with the Twins before last year. And a called strike one and one. And we mentioned before that Boston manager Bobby Valentine was his manager for a few years in Japan. He was interested to, to hear Valentine's comments. He said he had Nishioka. Here's a little pop fly short right field. In fact, the second baseman will make the catch in the inning. Nishioka at times was the worst player in the league and the best player in the league. And that was in the same season. <laughs> Game four of the Twins Grapefruit League schedule and the Red Sox have a five nothing lead. Dick Bramer, Burt Blylevin joined by the president of the Minnesota Twins, Dave St. Peter. Beautiful night for baseball and you have a night like this. You can't wait to get back to target field. Oh, you're right about that Dick and Burt. Welcome back. Another fun season of yep. Twins baseball and you're right. Beautiful night here in uh, Hammond Stadium and the you know, weather down here has been sensational all winter. Burt you know that and uh, we're looking forward to another great uh, five weeks down here before opening night. Opening day in Minnesota five weeks from today. When you look around, you see so many twin fans here. What a what a great ballpark. Yeah, you know we're, we uh, you know we weren't really sure what was going to happen with our attendance with uh, the Red Sox new JetBlue facility now being down in South Fort Myers, but we're well north of 100,000 seats sold for the season, and we're uh, we're really excited that the fact that I think sellouts will once again be the norm here at Hammond Stadium. You know their new ballpark. I drive by it every day. I'm staying uh, out in that general direction and uh, about 10 minutes east of here. What if anything does the, the construction of that new ballpark mean for the twins and their facility here. Well I think it, it certainly establishes a new precedent within Lee County uh, and, and, and I think that you know in and of itself has motivated the county and the twins to have a, frankly a lot of discussions about the future of this complex. You both know in 1991 with this complex opened. It was considered by most uh, around baseball to be the model facility and many of the new complexes in Florida and in Arizona have been modeled after the Lee County Sports Complex. So we now have a, the task to work with the county to make sure that it, it continues to be a state of the art facility for the next 20 25 years and that's the discussions that we're having right now with the county. Now I've read that they're talking maybe about some added seats here. Here's Holloman on the warning track catching Punto's foul ball one out. Yeah, Bert, you know, certainly fan amenities is going to be a big part of it. I don't know that we want a lot of extra seats mm -hmm. uh, because for all the seats you add, you have to add parking and we're going to be somewhat limited there. But we do think there are some fan amenities. We look at the outfield, foul pole to foul pole. There are some opportunities, we think, to do some things there to allow fans to maybe move 360 uh, degrees around this ballpark, much like they do at Target Field. Food and beverage opportunities, some different uh, um, things around merchandise and retail, and then of course there's a huge focus on player development. You know, what can we do 
to make sure that this continues to be a competitive advantage for our, for our ball club at the major league level as well as the minor league level. Now, one thing, Dave, I know that there are three main fields in the minor league complex. Of course, they have one here that's adjacent to the ballpark here where they call field five, but the county has done a good job of purchasing yeah. some property to maybe add another field or two for the minor leaguers. Yeah, we, you know, we have more than 200 guys in, uh, in, in, in camp. So, mm -hmm. you know, frankly, this year we're actually using some of the fields over at City of Palms, mm -hmm. which is, the, 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 of course, the complex the Red Sox have vacated to move to JetBlue. We'd like another practice field. That's a big priority for us, uh, as well as obviously just all of those modern amenities around training and hydrotherapy and um, those things that I think have been pretty standard now across Major League Baseball. Well, I know over at Jet Park, that's what they're talking about. Their, their training facility, a weight room, something that, uh, you know, back when this ballpark was built, <laughs> you know, weights weren't as yeah. well, and we prevalent added, in and, baseball. And as you know, we added a, a major weight room that now both our Major League and Minor League uh, group share, but you know, I think we, we'd like to ultimately see uh, more of that and, and, and perhaps have a separate room for the major league guys versus what goes on at the minor leagues. Liam Hendricks, a Twins pitcher, former twin Jason Repko in the box, two and two, the count one down. Dick Bramer, Burt Blylevin, joined by the president of the Minnesota Twins, Dave St. Peter. Hendricks made his major league debut in 2011. And now three and two. Well, David, we mentioned right off the top the uh, regular season opener is a month from tomorrow in Baltimore and then three games at Camden Yards and then uh, the first homestand Albert Pujols and the Angels opening right. up the season this yeah. year. Yeah. Ball third strike two down. You know uh, you know obviously if you look at our schedule early it's uh, it's not easy. We're going to see a lot of good teams. And I think that's good. You know we'll we'll sneak up on some people I'm sure and obviously uh, we're excited to, to have the third year at Target Field April 9th. Uh, the home opener and uh, you know who better let's jump into the deep end of the pool against <laughs> Mr. Pujols. And then the Rangers the World Series representative from the American League the last two years. Exactly and uh, of course the Red Sox come in in April as well and um, you know it's uh, it's going to be exciting. And that ball dies in the grass and Iglesias gets a bunt single he popped it up. But Holloman was playing back halfway on the uh, infield dirt and had no chance to catch it on the fly a two out single. Well, as you know, Dave, it all comes down to good pitching. And, uh, you know, the Twins have to get off to good pitching at the beginning of the game. A late Iglesias showing off his speed right here. Good bunt. How about that double play he turned? That was an impressive turn, I thought, as well. That kid can really play defense. Yeah, only 22 years old, a guy that defected from Cuba. But, you know, when you have a guy like, say, Dustin Pedroia yeah. that you work out with, and, you know, he's he's just... He's, he's one of these guys that has a baton that's going to pass it on to these young kids right here. You need those veterans to do that. Ryan Sweeney takes ball one. Sweeney so far a bouncer to short. And he hit a smash that Morneau was able to spear and turn into an out. Morneau uh, his throw to second base hit the runner and another run scored. The Red Sox scored four runs in the second. Ortiz hit a home run in the third to make it a 5 nothing game. Well, Dave, we, we talked about the, the temperature tomorrow, I believe, in the Twin Cities, supposed to be in the low to mid-50s, and I know Larry DeVito's probably a, a relishing days like that to get out on, the, yeah. out on the field and get the target field ready for the open. Where do I sign up to get 50 degrees on opening day on <laughs> April 9th? I'd take that right now. But uh, and we've had a few of those days this winter up in, in Minnesota. No, we're, uh, we're feeling really good about our playing field. It's, uh, you know, it's in sensational shape. Um, we really haven't had to turn the, the, the playing field, the heating system below the field on all winter because it just hasn't been that cold. So, outside a delayed steal and a stolen base for Iglesias. He hesitated, took off, and then Mauer's throw was high, and it's a two out steal of second for the shortstop. Yeah, Dozier a little late getting over there. Joe Mauer and then takes off and makes a throw just high. So, Iglesias, second stolen base. For the Red Sox in a ball game. 2 0 to Sweeney. And now down and in 3 0, Euclid on deck. Dave, how are the uh, ticket sales at you Target Field? You know, they're good, Bert. You know, I, you know, I think uh, the, the, the ballpark experience speaks for itself. Clearly, we were disappointed what happened on the field last year, so we weren't really 
fully certain what to expect, but you know we renewed at 85 percent on our season tickets, and we're going to end up at probably about 23,500 full season equivalents, oh, which great. will put us in the top six or seven of all Major League Baseball. And as of uh, this morning, we've sold more than 2.3 million tickets for the 2012 season. So we're really excited and very thankful. Our fan base uh, really has emerged, in my opinion, as one of the the better baseball fan bases uh, around the around the league. Now I know you know after the first year at Target Field there were some changes made to Target Field like the batter's eye yep. you know players I know they wanted the fences in but <laughs> is there anything that say after the second year that the twins have improved on Target yeah. Field. Well nothing really around playability you're not going to see the fences the pitchers also wanted the fences moved out. Bert, <laughs> so let's be honest in full disclosure but you know some of the changes we made this year are more subtle they're around things more back of the house. Uh, we're always working to improve the food and beverage operation there, both from a service perspective as well as many new items. So it's been another fun winter of taste testing, and I'm mm -hmm. excited to report we're going to have a host of new items uh, to announce here at the end of the month that I think will continue to make Target Field probably the best place to eat around Major League Baseball. I'll tell you what, it's already a great place to eat. Well, we talked about that Richard Simmons platter that they have here. Now, yeah, have you heard about it. that? <laughs> you know, but we, no, we got, they got a thing here. It's a cheeseburger, a grilled chicken sandwich, a bratwurst, uh, and bacon all in, in one bun. Oh, my. Oh, my. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Three and two. Hendricks trying to pitch out of a terrible situation here in the fourth yeah, inning. Deep fly to right. Here. No, he's okay. Willingham with the catch. Our thanks to the Twins president Dave St. Peter for stopping by. It's five nothing Boston. Minnesota Twins Baseball on Fox Sports North is brought to you by Grand Casino. The best stories start here. By Sanford Health. And by Window Concepts of Minnesota. Twins down five, but Mauer, Morno, and Willingham will hit against Padilla here in the Twins' half of the fourth inning. Uh, Padilla starting his second inning. There's that big slow curveball. This time he got it over for strike one. Backed it off to 53 miles per hour <laughs> that time. We saw Levon Hernandez. We mentioned him before. He had that very slow breaking ball he would uh, throw at times. One strike to Maurer. And a fastball down and in on the low 90s, one and one. Maurer bounced into a double play to wrap up the first inning. Foul off his front leg and it's one and two. So he saw the big slow curveball, then fastball down, and then Padilla kind of cut a little fastball in on him. And Joe ends up jam him, jamming himself. Oh. 
One and two to the Twins catcher. And classic Mauer fashion, a sharp single to left, a leadoff hit here in the fourth inning. Yeah, first hit for the Twins. Padilla tried to sneak that fastball by him, and Joe, very quick hand, just slapping the ball the other way. So Mauer aboard to start the fourth, and that'll bring up Justin Morneau. Morneau hit a ground ball to second in the second inning. Beyond Mauer and Morneau's presence in the middle of the lineup, there needs to be a power presence. In the middle of the lineup, the Twins need Mauer playing, but they also need him hitting more home runs. They need Morno hitting more home runs, and that's why Willingham was brought yeah. aboard. Again, Willingham, 29 home runs. Hopefully, he can create some of that power. Outside, one and one. These guys are going to get on base. I mean, Mauer's going to get on. He's a career 300 hitter, three-time batting champ. This guy, former MVP, he stays healthy. He's going to get on base. He's going to hit some long balls. But you need someone behind. Justin to protect Justin so pitchers don't say well I'm going to you know pitch around this guy to to get the next guy out. Lifted foul over the twins dugout one and two. Just lineups complementing any each other. Mauer got a single after falling behind one and two. We'll see what Morno can get done here. Another pop up that will reach the seats. So far, the only lingering issue for Justin involved the, the wrist that he had to. Surgery on last year. He still has some numbness on his uh, pinky finger. Shopik sets up inside. And Morno cracks his bat and pulls it foul. So they got it in there enough to crack his bat. Oh, he went in with that slider right there, not the fastball, the breaking ball, and Justin hit it foul. You know, the Yankees tried it last year when they brought in uh, Garcia and Cologne. You know, with Boston right. losing Lackey and probably Dice K, they're giving guys like Padilla, also Carlos Silva, an opportunity maybe be that fourth or fifth starter. Guys that you know are out of basically their careers. They have to step up again and see if they can uh, again compete at this level. Down the middle of strike and Morno frozen with a fastball one down. Well, remember the previous pitch he went in with that little cutter. This time he goes back in with a fastball and freezes Justin. Ball coming back over the plate clipping the inner half of the plate. So Padilla picks up his second strikeout in his second inning of relief. And now Willingham drew a walk in the second inning. Actually was hit by a pitch. And a fastball on the outside corner. Willingham. Uh, some would say replacing Michael Kadire in the Twins lineup, but he's taken Jason Kubel's number. Yeah, you know what? I think about Willingham when he does, and I, when the home runs he hit in Oakland, also at Target Field, are down the line. And, you know, that's the place that the Twins feel that Willingham, that's where his power is. He's a pole hitter that has power down the line. It's hanging up in left field and a diving attempt, but no catch made by the uh, left fielder. Kroger, so first and second now, one away for Ryan Doman. Well, good effort right here by Kroger. That ball kind of a jam shot right here, but Willingham hitting it out there, 
And a little bit of a line drive. Kroger comes in. Looks like he had it in his glove, just uh, kind of trickled away at the top of his glove. Good effort. Dillman walked his first time up. Twins trying to get back in the game with one swing of the bat. Dolman, as we mentioned before, a switch hitter. Inside, ball one. Dolman's played some at first base. 35 games. He's been in the outfield, but the bulk of his time has been spent behind the plate in the American League. Now he will, as we said, get a chance to DH some, perhaps a lot. Career high 15 home runs with the Pirates in 2008 when he hit 318 in 431 at bats. Couple of men aboard. Good time for Doma to hit one out by the pine trees in right field. Up and away, and it's 2 0. That high? That high pine, pine tree? Or palm tree? 2 0 to the Twins left fielder. Kept foul. Two hundred eighteen at bats for the Pirates last year. Twenty one extra base hits. That's a number I always look at. There's pine. There's right a Florida there. pine show tree. A palm. And there's a Florida there's a palm, palm tree. tree. Two and one. That's a number I like to look at when you're talking about a player's career or their season. One extra base hit per ten at bats is a, is a nice figure for a player to have, and Doma did that in limited duty with the Pirates last year. Three and one. Twins threatening to get their first run here in the fourth inning. Bounced foul wide of the bag and David Ortiz. wants a different baseball. Twins facing the Red Sox. And as Dave St. Peter said, Red Sox will come to Target Field in late April. But he had drops the baseball but didn't have his foot on the rubber yet, so no balk called. And Dolman stands in another 3 2 pitch coming. Line into center field. Maurer will go to third and he'll be held there. The bases are loaded. So good at bat for Dolman. He crunched it and lined it past Punto into center. And now the Twins have the bases loaded with one down. Yeah, Maurer had to hold up at second base because Nick Punto went for that ball and it just got over his glove. Dolman going out. Getting a pitch outer half of the plate, but lining it back up the middle. Now watch Punto right there. That's why you have to hold up. Once that ball got through, then Joe takes off, but he had he stopped at third by Steve Little. Twins had a one out threat going in the second inning, but then Buckholt struck out Hughes and Dozier, and those are the next two batters scheduled to face 
Padilla here with the bases loaded and one out. Hughes went down swinging for out number two. Dozier went down swinging to wrap up the threat. Fastball up and away. Dozier on deck. A belt high strike, one and one. Bases full of twins. Their first three hits of the night have come here in the fourth inning. Popped up in foul ground. Ortiz tracking it. Out number two. And Dozier will have another chance this time with the bases loaded. <laughs> Buckles took care of him on three pitches. Dropped a curveball. The last pitch Buckles would throw here tonight. Dropped a curveball on the outside corner. To strike him out on the second. Uh, and that was a good curveball, too. And I think that's the only curveball that Buck holds through his two innings worth of work. He's got a good curveball, but he was working on change up fastball. Up high ball one. So again, under the premise that Dozier. Will someday be a regular player for the Twins. A little extra interest in this at bat. How he will bounce back from a very disappointing at bat against a veteran pitcher in the second inning. Up high. Oh, I beg your pardon. A call strike one and one. Uh, belt high. See Shopik holding it. Letter high. Uh, letter high. <laughs> First one I thought was belt. That's letter. One and one to Brian Dozier. And now outside two and one. Padilla, the second Boston pitcher. He had a one, two, three, third and has run into trouble here in the fourth. Mauer, Willingham, and Domit have all singled here against Padilla. Just off the plate, and it's three and one. Uh, Dozier should get a good pitch to hit right here. Ball just outer half of the plate. Chopic trying to hold it. Cheetah saying it's outside. Three and one to the twin shortstop. Tapper to third. And Euclid slings it across. Close play. I tell you what, Dozier almost beat that out. But the twins leave the bases full in the fourth inning, and it's still 5 0 Boston.
Captiva, you can enjoy an atmosphere. It's a little quieter, a little less hurried, and a lot less like the rest of the world. Visit Fort Myers Sanibel. Dot com. Now, so many Minnesotans uh, come down here to watch baseball. That's the focus of their trip, but there's not a game here every day. So, a lot of other activities. So many great waterways. We're happy to have a Paul McCarthy, owner of McCarthy's Marina and Captiva Cruises. I would imagine you've uh, been, uh, with the weather being so nice, pretty busy this year. It's been a fantastic season this year, really. We couldn't have asked for a better season. Beautiful boating weather, beautiful baseball weather. Well, Paul, Paul tell us a little bit about. You, you told me earlier you have five boats, and what do you do? Well, you can get out to Sanibel and Captiva by automobile, and then beyond Sanibel and Captiva Islands, you can only get to by boat. And we travel out to about four of the different islands, and we have different boats that take you there. And each of those island destinations has its own special appeal or attraction. And where are you located? We're on Captiva Island. We have two docking facilities on Captiva. Okay. One is at the uh, the South Seas Island Resort. Are you near a, the bubble room at all? Uh, my marina is exactly beside the bubble room. Is that right? Yeah, the bubble room is my next Dick, you've been to the bubble I've room? I've been to the bubble room. It's a have. Big yes. A nice uh, legendary restaurant out mm -hmm. on the oh, it's Captiva. Fun. And the Mucky Duck is at the end of the street. So yes. Captiva. have been there too, haven't you? <laughs> Captiva is a great place to go. And if you're out in Captiva, you have to go for a boat ride with Captiva Cruises. Now, what, what are some of the islands that you, uh, if you take a boat cruise, where, where, where will you go? We go to Cabbage Key, which is kind okay. of a Jimmy Buffett, cheeseburger in paradise kind of place, which is very, very fun. Uh, Usapa Island was a millionaire's fishing club in the uh, early 1900s, and it's still a private club today, a fantastic destination. We go to Cayo Costa, which is a state park, wilderness island, which is fantastic for shelling and going to the beach. We go out to Gasparilla Island, to Boca Grande, which is a beautiful little town. We do a trip over to Pine Island, uh, which is across Pine Island Sound from us, and we do a whole program over there. So we travel to a bunch of different islands, and we do sightseeing, dolphin cruises, sunset cruises, sailing cruises. Towering pop-up, short left field. Dozier out in the outfield grass. And he'll call and make the catch. Now how, how big a group or how, how small a group can you accommodate with your boats? Well, we have regularly scheduled cruises, so one person can buy a ticket or a family of however many can buy a ticket and just go on any of the cruises. We also do private expeditions, so if someone wants to rent the boat for a wedding or for a family anniversary, reunion, birthday there parties, there you go, we do the whole thing. It's a great way to celebrate any kind of an event. Uh, we have a website, CaptivaCruises.com, and people can kind of check it out. David Ortiz called out on strikes and then a Home run over the fence and right to make it a five nothing game. Well, what's then, what's the average cost of say if I went by myself? You do a lot of the, that. You do yeah. a lot of things. Right? <laughs> I, do, I do. Well, you could bring some friends, but um, I have none. Oh, I'd go with you. That's deep to left center. Oh man, Domit going back. Oof. And it's off the wall. Both the ball and Domit are off the wall, and Ortiz glides into second with a double. A booming blast to left center field. Uh, we saw David Ortiz in his last at bat, you know, pull that ball over the right field fence. You can see it's Trevor Plouffe out there in left field now. And that's part of the learning process for Plouffe, who just kind of flied it in a really circle route out right. there. Right. Uh, Ortiz, not a bad pitch, but showing his power the other way. And you can see he tried to time it right there rather than going back to the wall, feeling it, and then making the catch. And these are all things that Trevor Plouffe needs to learn. So a one out double. With uh, Ortiz now out of the game. So Paul you didn't say how much is it going to cost me. If uh, I'm by myself and I want to go on one of your uh, charters. Well if you came out it would be comp but for, okay, the, yeah. for the average I've public it before. <laughs> it's uh, twenty five dollars to forty five dollars. Okay. Okay. Oh, and then okay. children are typically half price so. You we got we got guys in a truck. When you said comp, they are they want to go tomorrow. Sure, no problem. <laughs> no, we're going to be in uh, Port, Port Charlotte, Charlotte tomorrow. tomorrow. Right. Yeah. Chopper foul, two strikes. So, do you get off the boat? Some of our trips go to the islands, and you actually disembark the boat at one of these okay. island destinations. Yeah. And if you're going to, for instance, Cayo Costa, you'd get off the boat to do some shelling. Sanibel and Captiva are famous Good. for shelling destinations. Uh, if you get off the boat at Cabbage Key, you'd get a cheeseburger in paradise. Okay. 
if you get off the boat in Boca Grande, you spend some time shopping in the town and visiting any, the Gaspar Inn. Any, any chance to see a lot of wildlife? Dolphins, excellent. We do, okay. uh, on all of our trips, uh, you're likely to see dolphins jumping right beside the boat. It's one of the big attractions of Santa and Captiva mm -hmm. Islands. We have maybe 300 resident bot bottlenose dolphins that live here year-round. And uh, on any of our excursions, you're likely to see the dolphins in the wild jumping beside the boat. It's quite a sight, I'll oh, tell you. Very nice. Juan Carlos Linares struck out for the second out of the inning, and here's Josh Kroger. And there's strike one. Kroger on the night, a single and a run scored in the second, and then he bounced to second in the third. Six hits for the Red Sox, a couple of extra base hits for Ortiz. A rough Twins debut for Jason Marquis in a game, of course, that doesn't count. Called strike, two of them now. To Kroger. Okay, Paul, before you leave here, how do say the viewers they come down to Fort Myers, Florida, they want to go on one of your cruises? How do they get hold of you? Well, first of all, they can go to our website, okay. which is CaptivaCruises.com. C A P T I V A, CaptivaCruises.com. Or they can just call us on the phone. Um, we're here, area code 239 472 5300. Very good. Paul, yeah, third strike. Paul, yeah. thank you. Thank uh, you very thank much. Thank you, gentlemen. Pleasure. Right. Always great to be with Twins. It's 5 nothing Boston as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. And Michael Holloman will lead things off for the Twins. Denard Span, Siyoshi Niyoshiuko will follow. And of course the Cubs, Phillies, and Brewers, the interleague opponents, are going to be uh, coming to Target Field. There'll be uh, tough tickets to come by. But the one way of getting your ticket without any problem is joining the Twin season ticket family. 20 game and 40 game packages are still available. And there are different options to suit your schedule. Call 833 Twins. Visit twinsbaseball.com to learn about the benefits of being a Twins season ticket holder. Well, Inman coming into the ball game. Those were his numbers last year in AAA Tucson. That in the San Diego Padre organization, signing with the Boston Red Sox as a minor league free agent over the winter. Holloman, Span, and Nishioka do up here. We would expect uh, all the regulars to get three at bats. Ooh, wicked shot up the middle, and Holloman drives the first pitch of the inning into center. So the Twins get a leadoff single for the second inning in a row. Had the leadoff man on in three of the five innings here tonight. Well, Hamden comes in, tries to get ahead with a fastball, but 
Holloman taking that fastball right back up the middle. Fourth hit for the Twins, all singles. Span drew a walk in the first inning, and then on a 3 1 pitch in the third, he chipped a little fly ball in the left field. And Span takes ball one. Span has been in center field and working out there exclusively. Ben Revere, when he has played, has been out in left. Both. Have an awful lot of speed and a lot of range, but neither has much power. No, well, that's not their job. You know, their job is to get on base and score runs, create havoc on the base paths if they can. It's a little number, oh, and that's, that's going to be a base hit. So, Span just kind of hacks the ball up the third baseline for an infield hit. And Span will be lifted for a runner here. Rene Tassoni will sub for him. Kind of a check swing. That ball had some sink on it, but right off the end of the bat. And the ball kind of hit no man's land right there. Nothing the third baseman can do except hold on to it. Span with his speed. So Span with a hit in a walk, reaches twice, comes out of the game. Tassoni replaces him, and here's Nishioka. Nishioka popped to first and then popped to second. Ball one. Want to know to tonight's twin second baseman? Well, they call the Bach. The Bach will be called, and that'll advance the runners to second and third. Let's take a look what Inman did right here. He came set. Tried to take he dropped it. his hands. Okay. Tried to take his uh, back foot off the rubber and may have done something. Well, he moved his hands before he put that right foot off the rubber. And Nishioka slaps a hit to left. It'll score a run. So the Twins, who got three singles, didn't score a run in the fourth, open the fifth with three hits, and it's five to one. Well, Nishioka at his finest right here. Just watch this pitch. Not a bad pitch, but Nishioka just dropping the barrel of a bat and lining it past the third baseman in the left field. The uh, second hit of the inning provided by Denard Span, who came out of the ball game, and now he's nice enough to join us with a headset down by the Twins dugout. Uh, we mentioned uh, Denard with uh, regarding Justin Morneau. So far, so good. Uh, physically, for you, I'm guessing it's the same as well. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I've been uh, feeling good this far. Um, so far, you know, the second game of the, of the spring training, but uh, uh, so far, so good. You know, we were just talking to Nard about you and Ben Revere, how you guys get in that lineup. You're going to create some excitement. And Dick mentioned, well, they don't have a lot of power. And then you put that. Oh, come on. Beautiful now. swing. Who doesn't that, have that any you power? Did right there. Come you, on. That, that you kind of, uh, you know. That's what they teach right us. Right down the third baseline. That's that a heck of a hit. That's what they're teaching us. 2-0. <laughs> Come out of your shoes, man. <laughs> Defense won't know what hit them. <laughs> what was the offseason like for you in terms of training and getting ready? And I, and I think you also what changed your diet a little bit this year too, right? Yeah, I had to, had to uh, go through a few changes this offseason. Uh, like you said, I, I changed my diet a little bit. Um, saw some uh, saw a chiropractor uh, once a week and uh, got some work done in that in that area. Oh, Joe Meyer with a hit there with the fourth nice. straight hit. Drop the head on uh, that pitch. Nice. Banked a single right, and it's five to two. 
Yeah, but uh, did some chiropractic work and um, did some yoga this off season. So um, you know, I, I, so far the, the things that I've done have uh, have had me uh, coming into spring training feeling pretty good. Well, pretty good curveball right there, but Joe just dropping the barrel of a bat and picking up the RBI single. So Joe Lee's with a couple hits here this uh, this evening. You know, Denard, we, we had a chance to talk a little bit and during the winter caravan about your diet and everything you're going through. When does a player that say that went through what you went through last year, when does it leave your your mind? I mean, that that just it's gone. That's a good question. Um, you know, every every morning I wake up and come to the field. You know, I, I try not to think about uh, you know last year. I try not to think about having a concussion. Uh, I just try to you know come every day with the mindset that I'm a, I'm a play hard and, and, and play the same way I played before I had the concussion. Steve Pierce is the hitter hitting in Justin Morneau's spot. Pierce has played some at first base, the outfield and third base. Another guy who's bounced around a little bit, uh, had some major league experience again out of the Pirate organization. Hey, Denard, I think a lot of viewers want to know, there was a frustrating year last year, but the defense was not Ron Gardenhire type of defense. Are the players and, and the coaching staff really you guys spending a lot of time on that? Oh yeah, this is probably this is first spring training and probably six six uh, big league camps for me that uh, I feel like we've um, practiced a lot of the small things. Uh, you know, defensively, base running. Uh, we spend a lot more time. Uh, you know, because we you know we made a lot of mistakes, a lot of small mistakes that that we normally don't. Do. And uh, so far this spring, you know, we've been. Uh, you know, just just working on you know throwing to the right bases, working on our, our, our foot, our feet work, our footwork, and uh, you know just the little things, man. And you know we, we know that um, those small things are going to take us a long way. Take a look at the check swing and the called strike on Pierce. Mm. Didn't look like he went. Did he go? Jeff we Kellogg don't. said he did. Yeah. There's that field and Colbert over at first. At any rate, it's two and two. Come on, Steve. And now a full count. Denard, uh, you came back and got a couple of at bats towards the end of the last year. How important were they, those at bats, to set you up for your offseason of conditioning and, and reconfiguring your, your, your workout program? Uh, they were, I think they were very key for me. Uh, you know, last year, uh, you know, being out for as long as I was out, you know, I had a lot of doubts. Bouncer uh, to short, see if they can turn two. Uh, they do, two down. A runner advances to third. But Pierce wraps into a double play. Yeah, but I, you know, I had a lot of a lot of doubts, you know, last season, and uh, you know, for me to come back the last week week and a half and and get some at bats and get some game uh, game uh, game time um, before the off season was was definitely big for my confidence and, and all that. It's got to be a lot of confidence for you too, just walking around the clubhouse and feel like. You know, because I spent some time on a disabled issue. You don't feel like you're part of the club, and no. now you're spring training, and you, you know you come to the ballpark with a smile on your face. Yeah, man, last year was tough, man. I felt like I felt like I wasn't like you said, I wasn't a part of the team. Uh, you know, when the team went on the road, I, I stayed back, and uh, I just felt uh, you know just so disassociated with the team. And uh, you know, so far this spring training, it's just been a thrill to come here every day and and be in all the drills and, and participate in everything and kind of feel like a part of the team again. You know, and I think that's sometimes overlooked, Dick, that, you know, what Justin went through, what Denard gone through with Joe, you, it's such a team game. And, and when you when you cannot participate, boy, I tell you what, it, it really hurts. That's dropped down the right field line and drifts over near the tarp of the warning track. You know, when you're a little kid like Denard, you dream about playing at the major league level. The last thing you think about is I'm going to get hurt and I'm not going to participate. But boy, when you're out here and you're wearing a uniform, you're a kid again. Yeah, it's no better feeling than putting putting this uniform on and, and coming out here and, and doing what we love to do, man. And uh, last year, like you said, being hurt, it, it, I think it was the type of injury that I had where I didn't know, uh, you know, when when I was going to be feeling better. But uh, to come here this far, I mean, come here this spring training and, and to be feeling good, uh, uh, just been a thrill for me. Yeah, good for you. Willingham, the hitter, two strikes. Twins getting on the board with a couple of runs. Oh. And now high and tight. Willingham was hit by a pitch in the second inning. So many new players wearing Twins uniforms. Bernard, you know, Josh Willingham, one of them. Does it take time to get to know everybody? <laughs> Yeah, it does, man. You know, these guys come in here. They've been uh, with with some other teams in the past, and you know, they, they come in the spring training, uh, trying to trying to figure out what's going on. They're trying to figure out our, our routine, try to figure out the Twins' way. 
trying to figure out, uh, you know, just our coaching staff and just everything. So, uh, you know, hopefully through the midway point of spring training, everybody starts to get on the same page and, and gel. And before spring training ends, we're going to the season feeling pretty good. You know, I talked to Tony Oliva before, and you know, with in English or Spanish? Yeah, uh, well, or Spanglish. I think it was English. <laughs> you but, never know uh, with Tony. <laughs> yeah. But the importance of just having at bats in spring training. Last year there was, and I'm not, you can't put your thumb on one thing, but so many guys were injured last year. To keep you and Justin and and, and Joe, get your at bats so important in spring training to get ready for the season. Yeah, it is, man. This is uh, spring training so big for for all of us here to to see pitches and to and you know just to get a feel for the game again. You know, baseball is, is a sport where you take off a week or two and you, and you lose everything. And it's about getting back into that routine of playing every day and, and getting getting you know getting a feel for uh, this game again. So you know, getting at bats that that's part of getting ready for spring training. Now we're showing Tony Oliva and Rod Carew right there, two guys that I'm sure you pick their brains as much as you can. Yeah, I try to. Every day I come to the field, you know, I, I try to get as much information from those guys because those guys are definitely uh, legends in my book. And um, Tony should be a Hall of Famer. And, and yes. you, you already know um, Rod is a Hall of Famer, but just two good baseball guys. Trevor Plouffe hitting. In uh, Ryan, what was uh, Ryan Domit's spot? Willingham lifted for a pinch runner, and Plouffe represents the tying run here. Only one batter's been retired, and that on the double play ball. Plouffe takes low ball one. Well, Denard, speaking of uh, Rod Carew, I know he's been in camp for a couple of weeks already, and he spent a lot of time working with you and uh, Ben Revere uh, on bunting. How is that going? I was going pretty good. You know, every spring training, uh, you know, we set out to to bunt a thousand times this season, but uh, you know, sometimes it doesn't work out that way. But uh, the the big thing is that we are, you know, we are working at it and and and, and thriving to be better bunters and and use that as our game because you know we both have speed and we both know that you know if we can lay down bunts every now and then it can you know it can change the, the the game well you know stay with a bunt because rod always bunted i don't think he ever pulled the ball toward first base where you are one and i think ben revere same times you'll take the ball with you to first base where rod he'll always lay down that ball down that third baseline yeah i mean like you said you know when you when you have that weapon of bunting it, it brings the whole defense in and, and it opens up holes, uh, you know, for you for when you do swing the bat. So, um, you know, we, like you said, we, we have to uh, be mindful of that and, and, and try to do it as much as possible and, and keep the defense honest. One and two to Trevor Plouffe trying to tie the game with a home run here. Oh, busted bat and a little dribbler foul. foul. Just foul. So the bat will continue, but with a different stick. Yeah, that call right there, the home plate umpire's call until the ball goes by the first base bag. And the first baseman came after that ball. Tim Cheetah right there called the ball foul. Take a look right here, right off the end of the bat. Watch the first baseman come in. And where he feels that ball. It's not the first base umpire's call. It's a home plate umpire's call, and Cheetah called it foul. First and third, two runs in for the Twins. All six of their hits, excuse me, all seven of their hits have been singles. Three of them in the fourth inning and four of them here in the fifth. It'll be a good time for a little gapper right here. Yeah. Sounds good to me, Bert. Hi, right, fastball guy. Denard, we thank you for your time. We wish right, you nothing guys. but the best. Keep yes. it going. I appreciate it, guys. All right. All right.
It's 5 2 Boston. Red Sox got the first five runs of the game. Twins come back with a couple of them in the bottom of the fifth. Wolves Weekly is your all access pass to the Minnesota Timberwolves. This week, a spotlight on veteran guard Martel Webster. See how Anthony Tolliver gave back to some local kids. And we'll break down the approved play from Nikolo Pekovic. Watch Wolves Weekly tonight, 10 o'clock, only on Fox Sports North. Carlos Gutierrez will come into the ball game. Second yeah. appearance of the spring for Gutierrez. Yeah, Gutierrez, when he's on, good sinking fastball, hard slider, and a changeup. And as Gutierrez finishes his warm up tosses, we're happy to have Josh Willingham joining us now from the uh, Twins dugout. Josh, uh, you knew a Twins organization, of course, uh, playing against them over the last uh, few years. What have you learned about them since uh, putting on their uniform? I would say very organized, number one. Um, you know, everybody's on the same page from starting with Gardy all the way down to, uh, you know, all of us. So I, I would say that that's the number one thing so far. You know, when you get traded, how long does it take you to say, whoa, I'm with a new ball club. Now I have to, you know, know a little bit more about Minnesota and, and uh, you know, feel like you belong. It takes time, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. You know, I think developing the relationship is the, is the biggest adjustment because, <clears throat> You know, when you're with a team for a, a certain amount of time, you know everybody from the owner all the way down to, uh, you know, everybody in the clubhouse, clubhouse assistants. So I think that's the biggest thing is, is getting to know your teammates, developing relationships with them, and, um, you know, becoming a team. And I think that's what spring training is for, but that's the biggest thing for me. Josh, I think a lot of times as a former pitcher, you go to from organization. I was traded five times. You always have different philosophies as far as maybe my pitching coach on what, they are trying to maybe make me do you know when when a hitter comes over I mean you have your way of hitting you were very successful last year 29 home runs drove in almost 100 runs Joe Vavra does he have an opportunity to to look at some tape and say hey you know and talk to you about it yeah I think he's had time to look at my uh, when I'm successful as a hitter and uh you know, I think at this point in my career, and uh, not Joe and I have talked about it, is, is kind of making me uh, be the best that I can be. You know, we're not trying to make me hit like anybody else. You know, I've been hitting the way that I hit for a long period of time. So it's kind of like, you know, find out what I do good, and uh, I'm working with Joe on how to fine-tune fine -tune some of those things and, uh, you know, just to allow me to be as successful as possible. At bats here in spring training, very important to you. They are, um, and I think, um, you know, just being on time uh, a little bit, especially early in spring, it, it, being on time every now and then is always a good thing because for me it's usually a, a pretty good battle, uh, especially early in spring on, um, you know, just getting comfortable and um, getting comfortable in the batter's box and, and kind of everything working together and, and being on time. So, um, you know, that's the biggest thing, and that comes through at bats. You're exactly right. Gutierrez with another strikeout. He's made an impression here by throwing strikes, something that he had a tough time doing in his uh, first outing this year. So two down. Josh, uh, the 29 home runs last year in a, in a ballpark that is uh, Oakland, your home ballpark, considered to be more of a, a pitcher's ballpark. We had a chance to chat briefly with you before the game, and I guess that's your impression of Target Field as well. It is. It's a big ballpark. Uh, that's no secret. Um, I think that can uh, play to our advantage, though. You know, we have to use that, and our pitchers have to, uh, you know, be able to use that. And, of course, our outfield uh, with Denard and, um, you know, a lot of the guys out there have good speed, so we can use that as well. Uh, but it is a big ballpark, uh, but it's also a great place to play. It's a very beautiful ballpark. Popped up right side. Looks like it will be a good inning for Gutierrez. A couple of strikeouts. And a pop out. And we thank Josh Willingham. Good to have you on our side, Josh. Josh. Thank you. All right, guys. Thanks.
Bruins fans with uh, jackets on here. It's uh, turned cool into the evening, and we'll be bringing you four more day games, including tomorrow at noon against the Tampa Bay Rays. And then coming up on Sunday, the Yankees come here. Some of us are going to Lakeland to do the <laughs> Tiger game, and then the Rays back here on the, uh, March 26. I wanted to go to Lakeland. Joker well, Marshawn State. My attorney told me <laughs> not to. And you always have listened to your attorney. <laughs> yes, over there. I have. Luke Hughes will lead things off. Takes an off-speed pitch over for strike one. Hey, we want to uh, pass along um, our uh, sympathies to the family and many friends. Uh, former twin Don Mincher yeah. passed away Sunday evening. Don uh, was a part of the '65 American League champion Minnesota Twins. Really bailed the Twins out when Harmony Killebrew got. Hurt in the middle of that season, did a great job at first base, hit a home run in his first World Series at bat, and then you said you you saw him play uh, when uh, I grew up in Southern California. I still haven't grown up. When I was out in Southern right. California during my high school days, uh, Don Mincher was part of the Angel organization. Twins traded him over there for Dean Chance, who mm -hmm. had some good years with the Twins, yeah. uh, and then uh, Mincher was part of the '69 Seattle Pilots. Ended up getting a World Series ring uh, in the early 70s with the A's, and he passed away after an illness yes, Sunday seven, night. 73 years old. So our condolences go out to the Mincher family. Inside, missing the. You know, about again. two weeks ago, I went over to the, uh, the East Coast and went to a Gary Carter's funeral. Gary Carter uh, passed away at age 57. The Hall of Fame catcher. And a brain tumor, and it looked for a long while like he was uh, winning that battle, but he eventually succumbed. To those tumors. Hughes taps it foul. It'll be Hughes. And then uh, Pedro Florimon is into the on deck circle. He's going to get in at bat here. Three and two. The Twins have tried to claw their way back into the game with a bunch of singles, seven of them over the last two innings. Busted bat. And Hughes is retired by half step one away. And that'll bring up Florimon. A oh, good play right here as the third baseman cuts across by the shortstop. Good strong throw, but good hustle by Hughes down the line on a bang bang play. Pedro Florimon was claimed uh, by the Twins on waivers. He got eight at bats with the Orioles last year. Um, haven't heard much about him. You probably have not heard much about him. But there are some in the Twins organization who think this guy might be their shortstop of the future. And I'm talking specifically about former teammate of yours, Tom Bernanski, who was the double A hitting coach and saw Florimont on a regular basis last year. They said, uh, Tom has said this guy flat out can pick it. He's a great defensive shortstop. Yeah, switch hitter, just 25 years old. Out of the Dominican Republic. Hit 267 at the double A level last year with some power, eight home runs, a lot of strikeouts, but a great arm, and we're Kind of intrigued with the notion of maybe seeing that arm here tonight. Two and one. Outside. You know, a lot's been made over the years of the Twins having almost a revolving door at short. It's a position you don't want a revolving door. With Jason Bartlett traded when it looked like he was going to anchor that position for a while. Christian Guzman, really the last guy over any number of years to play that position for the Twins. Yeah, before uh, Greg Gagne. Gags, you know, to part of two World Championship ball clubs. And, and we, we talked about it earlier. I did about the strength up the middle, how important it is. Ploof has been moved off of short now to the outfield after the Twins giving uh, him a, an unsuccessful shot at the job last year. Three and two. On the ground, and Florima retired. One or two down. And 
that'll bring up Sean Burroughs. Familiar name for many. Burroughs landing with the Twins after having a, um, shall we say, uneven major league career. Well, I played with uh, Dad Jeff Burroughs in Texas, MVP for the Rangers. Burroughs out of baseball for a number of years. Mm -hmm. Twins uh, saw him uh, very briefly when they were in Arizona last year. He takes ball one. Burroughs did not play baseball 2008, 2009, 2010, dealing with some personal issues. Came back, got 78 at bats with the Diamondbacks last year, hit 273. The former number one pick by the San Diego Padres, ninth overall in the 98 draft. Two and oh. And now three and zero oh. to Sony on deck. And a strike. Inman with his second inning of work having a little bit better time of it here in the sixth than he did in the fifth when he gave up four singles and a walk. A fly ball left center field. And it's a one two three six for Inman and a five two Boston lead. Stadium where the uh, Red Sox have a 5 to 2 lead over the Twins and this is the first time this year this copyrighted telecast presented by the authority of the Minnesota Twins and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Minnesota Twins LLC it's like riding a bicycle oh. you just never forget right thank goodness I have it in my bathroom. Have it on the wall. Not my bicycle either. Well, here's Deolis Guerra. And Guerra reaching a crossroads, one would think, in his, at least his twins career. He came over uh, to the twins in the Johan Santana trade. He's the only body left uh, from that to trade. And he's always been an intriguing prospect because of his stature and his size. But as you saw, even at the double A level last year, he did not have a good year. Tremendous arm. He just not has not been able to control that fastball the way that the Twins organization would like him to, to be. 
And a belt high strike. An Clocked at 90. Yeah, an overpowering fastball at times, but he's just very inconsistent as far as hitting his spots. Inside a ball. At no level since the trade has he stepped up and dominated the opposition. Swing and a miss on an off speed pitch one and two. Used almost exclusively as a starting pitcher until last year. And in trying to unlock his potential, the Twins moved him to the bullpen. There's a curve, tap foul. Yeah, scatter report a fastball between 88 and 94. The curveball you just saw, and then a very good changeup. Young man, still 22 years old. And a high fastball looped into right center field for a leadoff hit. Well, and that's what I'm talking about right there, Dick. Pretty good curveball, and then that high fastball, and. You know, at this level, you you keep that fastball at high level, you're going to get hit. Alex Hassan will hit. Let's take a look right here. See where that fastball is, and it's hammered into right center. Hassan in for Ryan Sweeney, who went 0 for three. He doesn't throw as hard, but he's got the same type of physique. Remember Daniel Cabrera of the uh, Orioles, a big, tall guy, long legs. And mm -hmm. uh, in uh, Cabrera's case, he, he had a hard time commanding uh, the strike zone. High and tight, 2 and 0. Oh. That really hasn't been that much of an issue for Guerra. In 680 minor league innings, 254 walks. That's not great, but that's not been the downfall for mm -hmm. him. Nor has it been home runs. 65 home runs allowed in 680 innings. Runner goes, and the pitch bounced to short. Florimond throws off that arm, slings it over to get Hassan one away. You can follow the twins with MLB.com at bat 12 for your iPhone, iPad, Android, or Blackberry. Get spring training scores, stats, highlights, live audio, and more. Text at bat to 31826 or visit twinsbaseball.com for details. Well, sometimes you look at those numbers, Dick, and it's always not walks and strikeouts. It's always what does he do with that first first pitch? You know, what does he do right. with the second one? Okay, ball one, ball two. Well, you're going to have to come in with a pitch, curveball. And the throw to third might have gotten by Burroughs and hit Iglesias. It looks like that's what happened. As he scampered to third, this young man, excuse me, this is uh, Chiasso, who stole third base. And so now there's a runner at third with one out. And the Twins will bring the infield in. Will Middlebrooks, the hitter. Big breaking ball missing. And it's 2 and 0. Oh. Guerra 6'5, 245 pounds from Venezuela. And as you mentioned Tuber, he's been around in this organization for a long time, but still just 22 years of age. Mm -hmm. Signed very young with the uh, with the New York Mets back in 2008. Chopped into left field, a base hit, and a run will score. Again, situations like that, you know, I mean, what's the count? 2 0. Oh. He has to come in with a pitch, and he gives up the RBI single. Middle Brooks picks up his first hit, picks up an RBI. Lars Anderson will hit. Anderson will hit. 
Ortiz with a pair of extra base hits David Ortiz a home run and a double off the glove and or the fence and left center of the glove of uh, Trevor Plouffe down and away ball one. Six to two Boston. Red Sox out hitting the Twins eight to seven. Lifted foul down by the Twins bullpen. Find out who our next pitcher will be. Him. <laughs> I believe that's Daryl Thompson. Is that 66 or 68? That's 66. That's Brendan Wise. One and one to Anderson. And now two and one. Well, you look at the Twins pitching here tonight, and without exception, the most effective inning was pitched by Gutierrez and what did he do that no one else did pound the strike zone he threw strikes Anderson squares takes a strike yeah Liam Hendricks pitched very well yeah. two very good yeah. innings but Gutierrez was out there and off the mound before we could even talk much about him a couple of strikeouts and a quick pop up. Down low, three and two. Lenaris on deck. Middlebrooks goes and a pitch is ball four. So Gara gives up a couple of hits and a walk. To the first four batters he faces. And that'll bring up Lenaris. Lenaris called out on strikes in his first at bat back in the fifth inning. Popped up behind second base. Infield fly rules called for the second out. So two down. And now Nate Spears will hit. Last year the Red Sox got off to a terrible start. Played very well early in the or midway through the season. We're in the driver's seat for a playoff spot, and then they collapsed for a, an historic, historically bad finish to the season. And of course, they're in a division where you can't afford to play poorly for any length of time with a very good young Tampa Bay team, the Yankees, an improved Toronto team. Well, what do you think about the new uh, wild card that the uh, baseball has put into play? Ten of thirty teams will make the playoffs. Yeah. I think it's a direct result of what the Twins went through in back to back seasons where those games, the loss in Chicago and the game 163 against the Tigers, were so fascinating to watch. The ratings for television were so great. I think they had to find a way to have in essence a game 163 which is all this wild card one game matchup is it's one extra game to advance one of the two teams into the playoff field of, of four in each yeah race. if I read it right I, they're doing the two three right playoffs 
for for the first round rather than the 2 2 1. Here's a drive to the right field corner and a fair ball it hit the chalk line and it'll be a ground rule double. So uh, Guerra gives up another run on a ball hit right down the right field line and kicked up some chalk and the Red Sox now lead at seven to two. Let's take a look at the pitch right here. Fastball pretty much right there. Good solid swing. And the ball bouncing out of the ballpark. So a ground rule double. So Anderson, who was at first base, has to stop at third. Luis Exposito, the hitter, with two men on and two out. Main reason that the the playoff format has changed in terms of 2 3 rather than 2 2 1. The regular season starting late. In fact, the regular season starting for the Twins on my birthday, there you go, April 6th. The World Series dates were already set. And I believe the last two games of the World Series would be in November as it is right now. So now they're trying to shoehorn this. Uh, Extra playoff game in, mm -hmm. and to accommodate that, they're taking away a, a travel day from the next right. round of the playoffs. Right. Two strikes to Daniel Butler is the hitter now. Nice block by Rolfing. What do you think of the uh, the wild card uh, matchup? One game. To advance. I didn't like it when I first heard it, but you know it's going to create more revenue. A players' association agreed. Uh, I just wonder if there's going to be. What if there is a one-game playoff between? <laughs> you know yeah. who's going to be the wild card team? Then what do you do? Yeah, I think it it was thrown in here very quickly to where the schedule was already set, like you mentioned. Hopefully, uh, it'll run smoothly. Breaking ball foul back, still one and two. And again, I, I just think that the, the ratings that the Twins White Sox game got a few years ago, and then the next year, the epic game between the Tigers and the Twins, the ratings that those games got got a lot of people's attention. And it comes down to dollars and cents and TV ratings. Deep down the left field line, and a three run home run. Making it a five run inning here against Deolas Garrett. On a one two pitch. Exposito. Excuse me, Butler cranks a three run home run. Well, watch how Butler turns on this pitch inside, just opening up. And a ball flying down that left field line out of the ballpark for a big three run home run opens up the ball game to a 10 to 2 Red Sox lead. Fastball and a swing and a miss. So the Red Sox with a four run inning, inning in the second and now a five run seventh. One and one. Yeah, they've already laid out the scenario. What might happen, say, if the Red Sox have to go out to the West Coast to play a game 163 and then have to fly back to the East Coast mm -hmm. to play the wild card game all in a span of, you know, 48 hours. And meanwhile, Rick Anderson wondering what he has to do, what the organization has to do. To unlock the puzzle of Deolis Guerra. Two and two. And he misfires, full count. There's Wise. He's warmed up and ready to come in, perhaps after this pitch, if Garrett can't throw it over the plate. 
driven to right. And a line drive will end the inning. Good inning for the Red Sox, though. A three run home run and a five run seventh to bust the game open. Sports North is brought to you by McDonald's. Get a freshly brewed cup of premium roast coffee from McDonald's, any size for just one dollar. And by Toyota and your local Toyota dealer. Here at Hammond Stadium, the Red Sox have hit a couple of home runs to break open the ball game now to make it 10 to 2. Ortiz home run in the fourth, or a third inning, I should say, and then a three run home run. In the seventh, here's Rene Tassoni taking strike one. Yeah, Brandon Duckworth on the mound now for the Boston Red Sox. In his second season with the Red Sox, last year spent the whole season down in Triple A. Duckworth has some major league experience with the Phillies, the Astros, the Kansas City Royals. Had some injuries that has set his career back. Way out in front of the changeup, and it's one and two. Now the Twins saw Duckworth when he was with the Royals, parts of three seasons, parts of two years with the Astros. Actually, you won eight ball games for the Phillies back in 2002. Mm -hmm. One and two to to Sony. And down the middle of strike, strike three for the first out of the second inning, seventh inning, I should say. Log on to FoxSportsNorth.com for Tyler Mason's complete coverage of Minnesota Twins spring training baseball. Glad you're with us for our first of five spring training telecasts. Should be encouraged that just about every game the Twins play during the regular season will be televised. Locally here we will be televising 150. There are five, perhaps six, Fox national telecasts that the, the Twins will be involved with. So just a handful of games won't be on television. Down and away, two and zero. Oh. Brian Dinkelman had a chance to play for the Twins last year. They hit over 300. And a little roller, and I mean roller to second base, two down. And now Rolfing will hit. Mentioned the four other or the four teams. On the rise in the American League East didn't mean to do a Buckshaw Walters Orioles a disservice, but the Orioles are rebuilding, and that's 
whom the Twins will play to start the season. Uh, starting one month from tomorrow. Twins have kind of a curious schedule. In, in terms of. Their road appearances early. We go to Baltimore to start the season then don't go back there. Play four games in New York on the next road trip. We don't go back there. Mm -hmm. We have three games in uh, St. Petersburg against the Rays. Then we don't return there. We go to Los Angeles after that for the only trip of the year. Get them over with, I guess. I guess. And then Toronto, the last three. That's our we only time see. in that's Toronto. Right. <laughs> will be the last three games of the season. We will face the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim nine times. Over the course of the season, but we will be done with them on May 9th. They come to Target Field twice. We go there in between. Two and two. To Rolfing. A little pop up behind the plate. And Duckworth has a one, two, three, seven. Let's take a look at the Grand Casino story of the game. Jason Marquis started for the Twins, gave up a run, four runs in the second inning. David Ortiz, a solo home run in the third. Twins come back, Willingham, Domit, get base hits. Nishioka gets an RBI single, puts the Twins on the board, followed by an RBI single by Joe Mauer. Good piece of hitting there. And so now the Twins will take a look at Brendan Wise, who was signed as a free agent out of the Tiger organization. Yeah, Wise out of Australia. This is his eighth year of professional baseball. Those are his numbers last year in the Tiger organization, like you mentioned, between Double A Erie and Toledo. Kind of a side armor, keeps the ball down. And we'll see how he fares here in the Boston eighth inning. A little insanity here for the Red Sox. Shea Swan Lynn. And a jam shot and a little roller to short. Yeah, see his arm. On the run, throws a rocket over there. You know, could do that, Chris John Guzman. When Guzzi first came up, boy, he had a great arm, just like that. Watch this little flip. Okay, it took him a little extra time to find a grip on that baseball, but boy, yeah. got something on that throw. So one down here in the eighth inning.
Siriasso, the hitter for the Red Sox. To center. And to Sony's out there to grab it. Out number two. And now Hassan will hit. You know, the thing that Wise has is his delivery is just peculiar enough. It's more of a sidearm delivery and a lot of guys have, have pitched a long time in the big leagues with kind of a funky delivery something that's out of the ordinary and wise looks like he's got that and that might help explain some at times very impressive minor league numbers now he's never thrown a pitch in the big leagues yet. But from that third base angle you can see his delivery and of course we all know Pat Neshek for about a year and a half was a. a about as good a setup guy as there was in the American League before well, you know, his arm got I think hurt. Dick hitters are taught to look for the ball out of, say, the hat, like Rod Carew said. Right. Always look to the bill of the hat, and all of a sudden, you know, you have someone like a Kent DeCalvey or a Dan Quisenberry that, you know, went from underneath or at different different angle. It is a little uh, sometimes hard to pick up. Looks like he hides the ball well right in there. In his minor league numbers, 128 walks in 424 innings. That's very good. Mm -hmm. Just 20 home runs allowed, which is very, very good. Sliced foul. Heck, I gave those up by June. <laughs> <laughs> Tip of that. One and two. And a tapper to third. Nice dig at first. And a good inning for Brendan Wise. North. 10 to 2 Boston Twins came into the game with a 2 and 1 mark in Grapefruit League play. If you're out and about this week, stop by one of the Twins Pro Shops in Apple Valley, Roseville, or Minnetonka. If you're downtown, the majestic athletic clubhouse right there at Target Field. Get uh, set up for the season with Twins gear shirts, sweatshirts, jackets, caps. Great selections at four convenient locations. Steve Pierce leading things off for the Twins in the bottom of the eighth. Ball one.
Here's some major league time with the Pittsburgh Pirates over the last five years. Bert Blylevin and Dick Bramer, glad you're with us. We're at Hammond Stadium in Fort Myers, Florida. Beautiful night for baseball, but uh, Jason Marquis struggled with his command and his two innings of work to start the ball game. And the Twins didn't take advantage of Clay Buckholtz's erratic control early in the ball game. Four runs for the Red Sox in the second. A couple of home runs since for Boston, including a three run home run in the seventh against Deolis Guerra, who was charged with five runs. A strike, three and one. The pertinent things uh, about tonight's game, though, involve uh, Joe Maurer, who uh, got a couple of hits early in the ball game, with a big pop-up behind third base. One down. Justin Morneau went hitless. Denard Span walked and singled. We are on the air again tomorrow. We don't expect Maurer or Morno or for that matter Span to make the trip. The camp is too full to ask players at this point of the season to play in back to back games. We're on the air at noon tomorrow from Port Charlotte. Well, the last time I did a game there, here's a Drive off the bat of Oswaldo Arcia. That's out number two. Last time I was in Port Charlotte to do a telecast, the Rangers were still there. Mm -hmm. Two down, and here's Trevor Plouffe. Josh Willingham drew a couple of walks and a single tonight in his three plate appearances. Ryan Domit with a walk and a single. Seven hits for the Twins, all of them singles. Strike one. Bluff entered the game in left field. Replacing Domit. Curve over for a strike. Two strikes. And a high fastball gets Plouffe, who goes down on strikes for the second time tonight. It's 10 to Boston. Red Sox have a four run second and a five run seventh tonight. And as we go to the ninth inning, Tyler Robertson will pitch for the Twins. Yeah, Robertson, a third round pick by the Twins back in 2006. 
Those are his numbers last year at double A. Very good. 55 appearances, 10 wins out of that bullpen. 3.61 ERA. And we talked earlier about Garrett, how the Twins moved him to the bullpen last year to try to get find a role that he could be effective in. It didn't really work so well for Garrett, but it did work well for Robertson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really his first year as far as out of the and prior to that he was mainly a starter. One and one. Robertson just 24 years old, 6'5", about 255, so a big guy. Fastball one. that can hit low 90, hard slider, curveball, and a changeup. Was the closer for the New Britain team last year, 16 saves. With a little number up the line, but foul. Twins really struggled with their relief core last year, the worst bullpen ERA in Major League Baseball, and that is so anti twins. One of the reasons this team has had an extended run of success is because the bullpen's been pretty reliable for all of those years, and it was hardly that last year. Hey. Solid rocket up the middle and a base hit to start the ninth inning against Robertson. I'll take a look at the pitch fastball right there. Good solid swing by Middlebrooks. And he gets his second hit. Get out of the way. Amazed you said this, this before. 22 years in the big leagues and you never got hit above the waist. Above the waist. Oh. Very lucky. Anderson takes a strike. I'm not saying some of them probably nicked my ear, <laughs> but uh, never actually hit me. How about uh, A.J. Burnett with oh, the Yankees? Man. He goes over to Pittsburgh working on bunting, bunts a ball into his right eye, and he gets surgery. Could miss two or three months. Orbital fracture around yeah. the eye socket, I guess. And, uh, and of course you see that and the first thing you think is well this guy hasn't practiced bunting much at all in his time with the Toronto and then with the New York was with the Marlins before that but mm -hmm. big swing and a miss good hard slider and there Robertson gets a strikeout. So one down here in the ninth <laughs> inning. Look at the breaking ball right here good location. Juan Carlos Linares. I mentioned four more telecasts this year, but this is our only telecast with the Red Sox, so maybe we ought to uh, bring, bring fans up to date. There is no more Mayor's Cup. No. No, Ron Gardenhire says he has it up in a cabin <laughs> in Minnesota, and he's not bringing it back. Well, it, it, uh, my goodness, there was, there was so much to play for. <laughs> well, Gardy has it, so the Twins win. There's a schedule right there tomorrow against the Rays down in Port Charlotte. Then the Yankees on Sunday, and then March 21st in Detroit and in Lakeland. But the Tigers hit six home runs in their uh, in their uh, spring Good. training. Debut. Get them out of the way. <laughs> Pulled foul. Well, I'm not working the game solo. So do you happen to know who's going to be? Oh, I was told you him? are doing oh, it solo is that in right? Brooklyn. Yes. Oh, I think we're combining uh, the telecast with the Detroit crew. I believe that's what we're doing. And I'm representing the Minnesota Twins. Yeah, I'll consider it. it like an all-star appearance. <laughs> Two and one. When you're there, if you run into uh, Officer uh, Peter, please <laughs> no. give him my best. 
What county is that in again? <laughs> it's in Lakeland. Yeah. Two and one. None of it matters, of course, until April 6th in Baltimore. A high chopper. Turn it. Bobbled by Burroughs, and he gets the out at first. Had a chance for the force at second. And instead got the out at first. But well, Burroughs obviously realizes he needs to make this play at second base. Yeah, just a lot loss of grip of the baseball, but alertly bare hands it and then get, does get the out at first base. Here's Nate Spears with two gone in the ninth. Your children are in the booth. You realize that they must they must have run out of money. <laughs> They're going to wheel me back to the car. I think. <laughs> Eric and Hannah in here just to uh, give Dad some moral tru support. Tru trouble. That's trouble. Right. Aren't they supposed to be in school? They are. They're on a, a field trip. That's what we call this. A okay. Florida field trip. And they and how long does this field trip it'll, last? It'll last about a week. <laughs> well, welcome to Florida. Two strikes for Robertson as he tries to put away Spears and get the twins off the field here in the ninth inning. And there's he a does. ball third strike. So Robertson pitches around a leadoff single, and the Twins have a lot of coming back to do in the bottom of the ninth. Couple of Mauer fans here. More importantly, the real Joe Mauer than uh, participating uh, in spring training activity. He's had a good game here today. Yeah, high fastball right there from Padilla, and then the RBI single that scored the second run for the Twins. That coming in the bottom of the fifth inning. Nevertheless, the Red Sox have a 10 to 2 lead. Sean Burroughs. And uh, Ramirez will hit here trying to do some damage here in the bottom of the ninth inning. And the Red Sox bring in a reliever, Jesse Carlson, who the Twins saw a little bit of when he was with the Toronto Blue Jays, signed as a minor league free agent by the Red Sox over the winter. Carlson will sling uh, his pitches first to Wilkin Ramirez, signed as a free agent. Ramirez, a little bit of major league time with the Tigers, 11 at bats a few years ago, 26 at bats with the Braves last year. Hopes to be in the outfield mix for the Twins at the secondary level, I guess.
And a fastball inside. And earlier we were talking about. Brendan Wise and his unique delivery from the left side. Carlson's got a unique delivery. Just told by the truck, 300 pitches have been thrown here tonight. <laughs> Is that all? Between both teams. <laughs> well, and it was really both teams. A marquee struggled for the Twins, but Buckholz was hardly efficient with his offerings in the first mm -hmm. two innings. Got a big double play ball off the bat of Joe Maurer in the first inning. One and two, and Ramirez Ooh, takes a pitch. Looked like it had plenty of the plate. Called ball two. And now three and two. Most left handers when they follow through they fall. Follow through and fall toward the third base dugout. Carlson falls toward the first base dugout. Lifted to right field. For the first out. Right, he falls that way Dick because we're watch where his release point is. His shoulder stays in. And that's the follow through right there. That looks like that would hurt. <laughs> Here's Florimon, second at bat for the Twins shortstop prospect. Hit a bouncer to short his first time up. We saw him hit from the left side before. Now he'll hit from the right side, and he takes a strike at the knees. Field line and Florimond retired. Two away. Sean Burroughs will hit. Burroughs with a fly to left his first time up. Strike that covers the inside corner. It's lifted to left center. Three fly ball outs end the game. And the Twins Grapefruit League record uh, now sits at two and two. Well, I think what we saw here tonight is uh, Jason Marquis just kind of getting his feet wet a little bit. He struggled in the second inning, but uh, hopefully that'll get better as the spring goes on. A lot of guys got some at bats, some good at bats for Joe Maurer. So, uh, building blocks. The only night game of the Grapefruit League schedule ends in a Twins loss 10 to 2. We'll be back to wrap things up from Hammond Stadium in a moment. <laughs> 